hands and reading the free plan scriptures and the two songs from the sounds and voices of NCCI. And now we are just going to come forth today and give us today's plan. All right. I'd like to extend the peace of the God of Israel to each and every one of you. And welcome you once again to another holy convention that Yahweh Elohim, through the Messiah, Yahshua, has seen fit to sit here in Atlanta. And the reason why he did these things is so that he can have one of a city, two of a town, so that he can form his majestic white horse that he's going to ride in the battle. Because truly, Yehuda, you, Judah, are the ones that's going to take this kingdom back. Amen. It was taken from us, and it's only right that we take this kingdom back. And what we've been doing so far in our classes is leading up to how this kingdom was taken and why this kingdom was taken and going on into the setup of the kingdoms of the earth uh, 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 and how we're going to be uh, treated during this uh, during this period of this 400 year captivity and what's going to happen to the nations once the Messiah returns uh, 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 on the scene. So I always try to uh, find it time to give thanks to the God of Israel that he sees fit that we know these things because many people don't know what's going on. I talked with a brother this morning that came from Texas and he was in a Bible class and uh, yeah and anyways uh, Brother, keep calling simply because he knows that what he's getting from those brothers is, is, is partial truths. Mm -hmm. But in NCCI, what we try to do is we try to cover all the bases to make sure that you get all of the truth so you can make up your own mind whether you want to serve the true and living God mm -hmm. and whether or not you want to enter into that kingdom that is soon to be uh, set up here on this earth. But Brother Steve, we do offer of the church and invite him who stands at the door that he may come in and suffer with us and us with him that we may continue to read out of this great legacy and consider what we read that we might be saved. I'm going to read the oracles of the church beginning at 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. But the end of all things is at hand. Be you therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things have fervent love among yourselves. For love shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man have received a gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of Elohim. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of Elohim. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which Elohim giveth, that Elohim in all things may be glorified through Yahshua, the anointed one, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of Elohim, by whom you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be you kind one to another, 
tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as Elohim, for the anointed one's sake, have forgiven you. Be you, therefore, followers of Elohim as their children, and walk in love as the anointed one also have loved us, and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to Elohim for a sweet smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be one's name among you as become a saint. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving effect. <laughs> Revelation chapter 3, verses 20 through 22. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my father in his throne. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. Amen. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church and hold a convention. Now, last week, we ended up with uh, the colonization of the ten tribes over Europe, Asia, and the, uh, in the Far East by Shalmaneser. Yahweh was in the process of tearing down the house. First, he divided the house between Samaria and Judea. And then he came and took Samaria out of the land, as he had said that he would, he would do. He's in the process of destroying our father totally, so that the remembrance of them would cease from among men. Mm. What we're going to do today is we're going to pick this up in 2 Kings uh, 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 chapter 18 and verse 1. 2 Kings chapter 18 and verse 1. Second Kings chapter 18 and verse 1. Now it came to pass in the third year of Oshia, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahi, king of Yehuda, began to reign. Twenty-five years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty-nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Abi, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of Yahweh, according to all that thy weed his father did. Amen. He removed the high places and broke the images and cut down the groves and broke in pieces the brazen serpent that Moshe had made. For until those days the children of Israel did burn incense to him, and he called it Nehushtan. He trusted in Yahweh Elohim of Israel. So that after him was none like him among all the kings of Yehuda, nor any that were before him. For he clave to Yahweh, and departed not from him, from following him, but kept Yahweh's commandments, which Yahweh commanded Moshe. And Yahweh was with him, and he prospered wherever he went forth. And he rebelled against the king of Assyria, and served him not. He smote the Philistines, even unto Gaza and his borders from the tower of the watchman to the fortified city. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Oshia, son of Eli, king of Israel, that Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, came up against Samaria and besieged it. Mm -hmm. And at the end of three years, they took it. And the sixth year of Hezekiah, that is, the ninth year of Oshia, king of Israel, Samaria was taken. Mm -hmm. And the king of Assyria did carry away Israel unto Assyria, and put them in Hala and Tabor by the river of Gozan, and in the cities of the Russians, because they obeyed not the voice of Yahweh their Elohim, but transgressed his covenant, and all that Moshe, the servant of Yahweh, commanded, and would not hear them, nor do them. Now in the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah did, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the fortified cities of Yehuda and took them. And Hezekiah, king of Yehuda, sent to the mess sent to the king of Assyria to a peace, saying, I have offended. Withdraw from me. That which you put upon me will I bear. Hmm. And the king of Assyria appointed unto Hezekiah, king of Yehuda, three hundred talents of silver and thirty talents of gold. 
And Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of Yahweh and in the treasures of the king's house. Now, a talent of silver was worth $1,980. Okay? And a talent of gold, well, $1,940, rather. And a talent of gold was worth $29,800. So it was a heavy tribute that he put on the day in life. So he didn't do that. Yes, sir. Verse 16. At that time did Hezekiah strip the gold from the doors of the temple of Yahweh and from the pillars which Hezekiah, king of Yehuda, had overlaid and gave it to the king of Assyria. And the king of Assyria sent the Tartan and the Rapsaris and the Rapshaka from Lachish to King Hezekiah with a great host against Jerusalem. And they went up and came to Jerusalem. And when they were come up, they came and stood by the conduit of the upper pool, which is in the highway of the fullest field. Mm -hmm. And when they had called to the king, there came out to them Eliakim, the son of Hekiah, who was over the household, and Shepna, the scribe, and Yoah, the son of Asaph, the recorder. Mm -hmm. And the rock shaker said unto them, Speak you now to Hezekiah, thus says the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is this in which you trust? Mm -hmm. You say, but they are but vain words, I have counsel and strength for the war. Now on whom do you trust that you rebel against me? Now behold, you trust upon the staff of this bruised reed, this bruised reed, even upon Egypt, on which if a man leans, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, unto all who trust in him. Mm -hmm. But if you say unto me, we trust in Yahweh our Elohim, it's not that he who high places and whose altars Hezekiah have taken away and have said to Yehuda and Jerusalem, you shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Now therefore, I pray thee, give pledges to my Lord, the king of Assyria, and I will deliver you two thousand horses, if you be able on your part to set riders upon them. How then will you turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master's servants and put your trust on Egypt for chariots and for horses? <laughs> Am I now come up without Yahweh against this place to destroy it? Yahweh said to me, go up against this land and destroy it. Mm -hmm. Then said Eliakim, the son of Hekiah, and Shepna and Yoah, unto the Rapshaker, pray, I speak, I speak, I pray you, to your servants in the Syrian language, for we understand it, and talk not with us in the Jews' language, in the hearing of the people who are on the wall. Right, because the common people don't know this 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 that this thing that which you're going through here. They don't know that uh, uh, they don't seem to understand. They may not understand that you're saying all these things to take all of the, the pride and the fight out of them. See, but you you talk to us in your tongue, because we ain't gonna go for your tongue. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, bro. Yes, sir. Verse twenty-seven. But the rap shaker said unto them. Have my master sent me to your master and to you to speak these words? Have he not sent me to the men who sit on the wall that they may eat their own dung and drink their own piss with you? Then the rock shaker stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language and spoke, said, Hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus said the king, Let not Hezekiah deceive you for he shall not be able to deliver you out of his hand. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in Yahweh, saying, Yahweh will surely deliver us, and this city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Hearken not to Hezekiah, for thus says the king of Assyria, make an agreement, agreement with me by our presence, and come out to me, and then eat you every man of his own vine, and every one of his own fig tree, and drink you every one the waters of his system, until I come and take you away to a land like your own, a land of corn and wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of olive oil and of honey, that you may live and not die. 
And hearken not unto Hezekiah when he mislead of you, said, Yahweh will deliver. This was a habit of the kings of the earth at that time. What they would do when they captured somebody's land, they would take the people out of that land and put them in somebody else's land that they had captured and bring those people and put them in that land. In other words, now you don't have no land. Now you don't have anything to fight for. Now you're serving to the king. Go ahead and read. Also, it caused confusion as to the identity. Um, Eventually, it did. Mm -hmm. People moved around so much they got to be called all kind of names. At one time, Israel was called Nubia. Mm -hmm. See, they were called Ashanti. Mm -hmm. You see, simply because of where they had been placed. Mm -hmm. and then uh, they had already gave them the name Balasha. Then they brought them over here and called them blacks, niggers, possums, coons, alligators, and everything else. No wonder we can't find our uh, identity. Because we got to look at the possums, the coons, and everything else. Go all the way back up through there and try to park back all those curtains. Go ahead and read. Verse 34. Verse 33, I'm sorry. Have any of the gods of the nations delivered at all his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? He didn't deliver y'all yet. I mean, he had dealt with gods that were no gods. Gods that people had made with their own hands, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 34. Where are the gods of Hamath and of Arpan? Where are the gods of Sepharpham and Hindah and Ivan? Have they delivered Samaria out of mine hand? Who are they among all the gods of the country who have delivered their country out of mine hand that Yahweh should deliver Jerusalem out of mine hand? Mm -hmm. But the people held their peace and answered him not a word, for the king's commandment was, saying, answer him not. Mm -hmm. Then came Eliakim, the son of Hekiah, who was over the household, and Shabna the scribe, and Yoah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, to Hezekiah with their clothes rent, and told him the words of the rap shaker. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, when King Hezekiah heard it, that he rent his clothes and covered him with sackcloth, and went into the house of Yahweh. Mm. And he sent Eliakim, who was over the household, and Shaphna the scribe, and the elders of the priests, covered with sackcloth, to Esau, the prophet, the son of Amos. Mm -hmm. And they said unto him, Thus says Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble, and a rebuke, and a blasphemy. For the children have come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. It may be, Yahweh, your Elohim, will hear all the words of the Rapshakeh, whom the king of Assyria, his master, have sent to reproach the living Elohim, and will reprove the words which Yahweh, your Elohim, have heard. Wherefore, lift up your prayer for the remnant who are left. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 36 and verse 1. Isaiah chapter 36 and verse 1. my brother when you uh, uh, in reading this when you ask where the, the gods of those all of those other lands you know where they were set up at in Samaria hmm. they were set up right there in our own land among the ten tribes uh, Ezekiel 36 and uh, I'm sorry uh, Isaiah 36 and verse 1 see a lot of people th this is what uh, the, uh, on the program uh, 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 this week a brother called in and he was talking about that you know some people call him this, and some people call him that, and some people call him this, but, you know, as long as I worship him with my heart and everything, then I'm worshiping God. No, you ain't. Mm -hmm. Yahweh said, my people shall know my name. He said, I'm going to magnify my holy name that you polluted among the heathen, wherever you meant, went, right? The average person that you ask what is God's name. When you say, what is the name of our Elohim? Mm -hmm. They never know. They never know. People say, well, you know, God's name is uh, Jehovah. Uh, and you say, uh, you say, you tell me Yahweh? Oh, yeah, yeah, Yahweh. So I didn't ask you what his name is. I asked you what was the God of Israel's name. 
Ezekiel 36. Isaiah 36. Isaiah, I don't know why I want to go to Ezekiel. Let's talk about Esau. I don't want to talk about Esau. Uh, uh, Isaiah 36. And pick that up the verse. Now it came to pass in the 14th year of King Hezekiah that Shennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the defense cities of Yehuda and took them. And the king of Assyria sent the Rabshakeh from the keys to Jerusalem unto King Hezekiah with a great army. And he stood by the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field. Then came forth unto him Elijah, Hezekiah's son, who was over the house, and Shephna the scribe, and Joah, Asaph's son, the recorder. Now, I read, I, I read that first part to let you know that we're still dealing with the same thing we was dealing with before, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now skip over to our chapter 37, my brother, and pick that up. Isaiah chapter 37, verse 1. And it came to pass, when King Hezekiah heard it, that he rent his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of Yahweh. And he sent Elijah, who was over the household, and shouted of the scribe, and the elders of the priests covered with sackcloth unto himself, the prophet, the son of Amos. And they said unto him, Son says Hezekiah, this day is a day of trouble and a rebuke and a blasphemy. Mm. But the children are come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. Mm. It may be Yahweh, your Elohim, will hear the words of the Rabshakeh, whom the king of Assyria, his master, have sent to reproach the living Elohim, and will reprove the words which Yahweh, your Elohim, have heard. Right. King went into the Lord's house and did just what he was supposed to do with somebody when you got a rebuke like that, you see. Mm -hmm. He had blasphemed, right? Mm -hmm. He went into the Lord's house and laid that letter down and described it, wrote, and look what, look what that man said going to do to you. Mm -hmm. see? This man don't care nothing about you. Right. See? He said he's going to come in your house and he's going to do this and he's going to do all that. What you going to do? All right. So he sent Isaiah the prophet and let send Isaiah and let's find out what he's gonna do about this thing here. So he went to Isaiah, go ahead and read and see what happened. Last part of verse 4. Wherefore, lift up thy prayer for the remnant that is left. Verse 5. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah. And Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall you say unto your master, Thus says Yahweh. Be not afraid of the words which you have heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Right, then don't you be saying, no, nah, what he was talking about you was one thing. <laughs> but don't you be afraid of his words which you have blasphemed me with. Now. See, I'm going to take him out on this. Where me, brother? Yeah. Verse 7. Behold, I will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear a rumor and return to his own land. And I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the Rabshakeh returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libna, for he had heard that he was departed from the quiche. And he heard say concerning Taharkar, king of Ethiopia, he has come forth to make war with you. And when he heard it, he sent messengers to Hezekiah, saying, Thus shall you speak to Hezekiah, king of Yehuda, saying, Let not your God, in whom you trust, deceive you, saying, Jerusalem shall not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands by destroying them utterly, and shall you be delivered? Have the gods of the nation delivered them that my fathers have destroyed as Gozan and Haran and Reseph and the children of Edom who were in Telethar? Where is the king of Hamath and the king of Arpad and the king of the city of, the city of Sephavim and Hena and Abba? And Hezekiah received a letter from the hand of the messenger and read it. And Hezekiah went up unto the house of Yahweh and spread it before Yahweh. And Hezekiah prayed unto Yahweh, saying, O Yahweh of hosts, Elohim of Israel, who dwelleth between the cherubim, you are the God, even you alone. Of all the kingdoms of the earth, you have made heaven and earth. Amen. Incline your ear, O Yahweh, and hear. Open your eyes, O Yahweh, and see. And hear all the words of Sennacherib, who have sent to reproach the living Elohim. Of a truth, Yahweh, 
The kings of Assyria have laid waste all the nations and their countries and have cast their gods into the fire, but they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore, they have destroyed them. Now, therefore, O Yahweh, our Elohim, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are Yahweh, even you only. Then he says, the son of Amos sent unto Hezekiah, saying, Thus says Yahweh Elohim of Israel, Whereas you have prayed to me against the Nazareth, king of Assyria, this is the word which Yahweh has spoke concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Yehuda, have despised you and laughed you to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem have shaken her head. The daughter of Jerusalem ain't thinking about that junk you talk about. Judah's going to be saved. Go ahead, brother. Verse 23. Whom have you reproached and blasphemed? And against whom have you exalted your voice and lifted up your eyes on high? Mm -hmm. Even against the Holy One of Israel. Mm -hmm. By your servants have you reproached the Adonai and have said, By the multitude of my chariots am I come up to the height of the mountains, to the sides of Lebanon. Mm -hmm. And I will cut down the tall cedars there and the choice fir trees there. And I will enter into the height of its border and the forest of its Carmel. Now, we had another king that came up that said uh, uh, he made orientation to the people, made orientation to the people and everything, and uh, exalted himself, right? And the word slowly me dying. Nebuchadnezzar came out to my isn't this great Babylon which I have built not understanding that Yahweh had brought him into into that right and the angel of the Lord said Nebuchadnezzar the kingdom is passed from you and they drove him out in the woods and he stayed out there seven years and they grabbed like an oxen did then he messed around and looked up and realized who it was uh, 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 that had put him in that position then Yahweh gave his power and everything back that was what that well we did to that later I'll go ahead. Verse 25. I have deed and drunk water. And with the sole of my feet have I dried up all the rivers of the besieged places. Have you not heard long ago how I have done it at an ancient time that I have formed it? Now have I brought it to pass that you should be laid to waste defense cities into ruinous heat. Mm -hmm. Therefore, their inhabitants were of small power. They were dismayed and confounded. They were like the grass of the field, and like the green herb, like the grass on the housetops, and like corn blighted before it is grown up. But I know your abode, and your going out, and your coming in, and your rage against me. Right, them country, they were nothing. Mm -hmm. See, they were nothing. But see, I know where you live. Mm -hmm. I know how you come in and how you go out because I set up and I tear down kingdoms on the earth, right? And my word is going out of my mouth and whatever's going out, that's what's going to stand. Go ahead and read, bro. Verse 29. See, that's why when you talk to them Christians, you ask them, say, well, show me the book where you're going to heaven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> show me where the words went out of Yahweh's mouth. Oh, well, see right here, say we're going to meet the Lord in the air. Didn't say you're going to heaven. Mm -hmm. Did you say it right here? We're blessed in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. Didn't say you're going to heaven. Mm -hmm. We're going to be in paradise with him. <laughs> That's what he told them two men was on the cross, right? He said, "Today mm -hmm. you shall be with me in paradise." Right? right. What was that paradise? The grave. Mm -hmm. And also the Messiah. They didn't have no worry right. and no nothing else, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. But brother, the Messiah who they love and know so much, he say no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that come down from heaven, right? right. And no man goes to heaven except him who came down from heaven. Even the Son of Man, check this out, who is in heaven, right? Right. Mm -hmm. The brother was on the earth when he said that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rattle that around. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, brother. <laughs> Verse 26. I'm sorry. Verse 29. Because your rage against me and our tumult are come up into my ears, therefore will I put my hook in your nose and my bridle in your lips, and I will turn you back by the way by which you came. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall eat this year such as groweth of itself, and the second year that which springeth of the same, and in the third year sow and reap and plant vineyards and eat their fruit. 
and the remnant that is escaped of the house of Yehuda shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. Amen. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and they that escape out of Mount Zion. The zeal of Yahweh of hosts shall do this. Therefore, thus says Yahweh concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shield, nor cast a bank against it. Right, he got all these men, he done brought all across the earth, right? And captured all these lands and everything. Got all this war machine out there. He always said he ain't gonna shoot arrows. This right. He ain't gonna even flash his shield at him. Mm. Approach the true and living God. That don't have, that don't work. Mm. Read, read, read. <laughs> Verse 34. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into this city, says Yahweh. For I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for thy we and for my servant thy sake. Mm -hmm. Verse 36. Then the angel of Yahweh went forth and smote in the camp of the Assyrians an hundred and eighty-five thousand. And when men arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. Mm -hmm. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. And it came to pass, as he was worshipping in the house of Nisroch, his god, that Adramelech and Shereza, his son, smote him with the sword, and they escaped into the land of Ariat, and he saw Haddon, his son, reigned in his stead. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to talk no more with him. Mm -hmm. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and he said, the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus says Yahweh, Set your house in order, but you shall die and not live. Hmm. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto Yahweh and said, Remember now, O Yahweh, I beseech you, how, how I have walked before you in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Then came the word of Yahweh to himself, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus says Yahweh, the Elohim of Dawid, your father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears. Behold, I will add to your days fifteen years. Behold, I'm going to add to your days fifteen years. Now, they already told him to get your house in order, boy, you're going to die. Yahweh told him to say, You're going to die, but I'm going to add to your years, to your days fifteen years, right? Mm -hmm. Ask yourself a question. Since you come under the blood, how many days do you believe that Yahweh has added to your years? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't read, brother. Verse 6. And I will deliver you and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. And this shall be a sign unto you from Yahweh, that Yahweh will do this thing that he has spoken. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees, which has gone down in the sundial of Ahaz ten degrees backward. Mm. So the sun returned ten degrees, by which degrees it was gone down. Mm. The writing of Hezekiah, king of Yehuda, when he had been sick and was, was recovered of his sickness, I said in the cutting off of my days, I, will, I shall go to the gates of the grave. I am deprived of the residue of my years. I said, I shall not see Yahweh, even Yahweh in the land of the living. I shall behold man no more with the inhabitants of the world. Mine age is departed and is removed from me as a shepherd's tent. I have cut off like a weaver my life. He will cut me off with pining sickness. From day even to night will you make an end of me. I reckon to morning that like a lion, so shall he break all my bones. From day even to night when you make an end of me. Hmm. Like a crane, all swallow, so did I chatter. I did mourn like a dove. Mine eyes fell with looking downward. Oh, Yahweh. Up. Look up when I'm sorry. Oh, Yahweh, I am oppressed. Undertake for me. Hmm. What shall I say? He hath both spoken unto me and himself have done it. I shall go softly all my years in the bitterness of my soul. Hmm. O oh, Adonai, by these things men live, and in all these things is the life of my spirit. 
so will you restore me and make me to live. Right. If you do what? If you go softly all the years in the bitterness of your soul. But see, what we like to do is this. We will pray to Yahweh for certain things, and Yahweh, we walk just as soft. Right? We walk just as soft and so forth. Then when Yahweh gives us these things, we get comfortable in these things, and we forget the words that proceeded out of our mouth. And what do you think the end of that is going to be? See, this is what we have to learn how to do. Once we come under that blood, we have to forget that old man and leave that old man laying in the grave. What I want and what I desire has nothing to do with what Yahweh wants for me and what his desire is for me. So what a man has to do is this. He has to learn to walk softly and follow the ways of the spirit you see and once he do that then he'll know how to walk humbly and justly before his god towards yeah. salvation Praise but if a man doesn't do this man or woman if they don't do this if they don't humble themselves under the power of the almighty god then truly how can they uh, uh keep from being bit by god yeah. go ahead Lee. yes sir see and we look around and we say things happen look things yes sir you lose this that over there break. This over here happens. You have to stand back and ask yourself, now why did this stuff happen? Yahweh give it and he take it away, right? Well, why is he taking it away in my youth? Why is he doing these things to me? Then if you go and look in your closet, truly look in your closet, instead of looking on the top shelf, just look all in the closet. If you do that, guess what? You're gonna find what you what need. But see, we won't look in our, we won't, we won't search our hearts and our spirits the way that we should do. You know why? We got that little thing that we want to hold on to. And that little thing seem insignificant to you that we want to hold on to to get you cut off. Get you cut off. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 17. Behold, for peace I had great bitterness, but you have in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption, for you have cast all my sins behind your back. <coughs> for the grave cannot praise you, death cannot celebrate you. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for your truth. The living, the living, he shall praise you, as I do this day. The father to the children shall make known your truth. Yahweh was ready to save me, therefore we will sing my songs to the string instruments all the days of our life in the house of Yahweh. Amen. For he said, has said, let them take a lump of figs and lay it for a plaster <coughs> upon the ball, and he shall recover. Mm -hmm. Hezekiah also had said, what is the sign that I shall go up to the house of Yahweh? Mm -hmm. At that time, Merodach Baladon, the son of Baladon, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he had heard that he had been sick and was recovered. <laughs> and Hezekiah was glad of them and showed them the house of his precious things, the silver and the gold and the spices and the precious ointment and all the house of his armor and all that were found in his treasures. There was nothing in his house nor in all his dominion that Hezekiah showed them not. Right. You know, our brothers like to do, yeah, I got this. Come on in, I got this thing over here, and I got this thing. Why don't you come on down in the den here so he can show you everything he's got, you know, how Satan is blessed him. And he, he going to church every day, paying tithes in one of them whorehouses, and, and trying to tell you that your God is blessing you see what I mean? He go and show you all the things that is, that, that, that God has given, right? This is what his guy did, right? Okay? Show both. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Verse 3. Then came himself, the prophet, unto King Hezekiah, and said unto him, What said these men? And from where came they unto you? And Hezekiah said, They are come from a far country unto me, even from Babylon. Then said he, what have they seen in your house? And Hezekiah answered, All that is in my house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. Then said Hezekiah, Then said Esau to Hezekiah, Hear the word of Yahweh of hosts. Behold, the days come that all that is in your house and that which your fathers have laid up in store unto this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left says Yahweh. And of your sons that shall issue from you, whom you shall beget, shall they take away. 
and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then said Hezekiah to himself, Good is the word of Yahweh which you have spoken. He said, Moreover, but there shall be peace and truth in my day. Right, he said, Nigga, I don't care nothing about that. Uh -huh. Good, he didn't spoke good. It ain't what happened to me. It ain't what happened in my day, but he spoke good, you know. Bye. No. Second Kings 20. And take that up in verse 20. <laughs> Brother, it shows that the king may have had sovereign authority, but then there's a board of directors <laughs> and a higher authority. So when the king saw the prophets coming, all of his uh, authority and power it had to take a back seat because the, the prophet was coming from the true authority source. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. His brother did all that good for all those years to just let this one act. That is so incredible. It just shows that though, you can do good all your life and then at the end do bad and then all that will be forgotten. But yet you can be horrible all your life and turn to do good and then be saved. So it's truly waiting to the end. When a righteous man sins, none of the things that he does is going to be mentioned to him. Exactly. When the wicked man turns from his way, then the angels of heaven rejoice. But the righteous, those that, that have, have rejoiced in righteousness, they go on and they go on and they go on. And it, it comes to a place where the last, the first is going to be last, mm -hmm. and the last is going to be first. That's incredible. You know why? People get set in that word. They say, mm -hmm. well, this is just a little thing. Uh, I don't even consider this to be sin. I consider this to be my right. You ain't got no damn right. Mm. Uh, <laughs> we got liberties that was granted to us in the law, but we haven't got any rights. What rights do we have? And you know what really bugs me? Mm. When somebody dies and a priest come up there to give him his last right. right. Mm. That don't even make sense. Mm. Mm. He ain't got no right. Mm. But what we have a tendency to do, like I said, we all have a tendency. We got some little thing we like to hold on to it and we say, yeah. well, God understand my heart. Right, he understands that, that wickedness is still there and he's going to give you promise until it's purged out. Uh, chapter 20, 2 Kings 20. Let's pick that up from verse 6. 20. 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 20. And the rest of the acts of Hezekiah, and all his might, and how he made a pool, and a conduit, and brought water into the city, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the King of Yehuda? And Hezekiah slept with his father, and Manasseh, his son, reigned in his city. Mm -hmm. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and reigned 55 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hephzibah. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh after the abominations of the heathens whom Yahweh cast out before the children of Israel. All the things that the father has made up for the son, you see what the son did? He was right. With it. right. Go ahead, bro. Mm. Yes, sir. Verse 3. For he built up again the high places which Hezekiah, his father, had destroyed. And he reared up altars for Baal and made a grove, and then Ahab, king of Israel, and worshipped all the hosts of heaven, and served them. And he built altars in the house of Yahweh, of which Yahweh said, In Jerusalem will I put my name. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of Yahweh. And he made his sons pass through the fire and observe times, and use enchantment, and dealt with mediums and wizards, he wrought much wickedness in the sight of Yahweh to provoke Yahweh to anger. And he set a graven image, graven image of the grove that he had made in the house, of which Yahweh said to Dawid and to Slobo, his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Neither will I make the feet of Israel move any more out of the land which I gave to their fathers, if only they will observe to do according to all that I have commanded them and according to all the law that my servant Moshe commanded them. But they hearken not, and Manasseh seduced them to do more evil than did the nations whom Yahweh destroyed before the children of Israel. 
And Yahweh spoke by his servants, the prophet said, Because Manasseh, king of Yehuda, have done these abominations, and have done wickedly above all that the Amorites did who were before him, and have made Yehuda also to sin with his idols, therefore thus says Yahweh Elohim of Israel, Behold, I am bringing such evil upon Jerusalem and Yehuda, that whosoever heareth of it, both of his ills shall tingle. Mm -hmm. And I will stretch over Jerusalem the line of Samaria, and the plummet of the house of Ahab, and I will wipe Jerusalem as a man wiped a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. And I will forsake the remnant of my inheritance, and deliver them into the hand of their enemies, and they shall become a prey and a spoil to all their enemies, because they have done that which was evil in my sight, and have provoked me to anger since the day their fathers came forth out of Egypt, even unto this day. Moreover, Manasseh shed innocent blood very much, till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another. Beside his sin, by which he made Yehuda to sin, in doing evil in the sight of Yahweh. Uh, uh, 2 Chronicles 33 and uh, uh, verse 9. 2 Chronicles chapter 33 and verse 9. in Chronicles chapter 33 verse 9. So Manasseh made Yehuda and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err and to do worse than the heathen whom Yahweh had destroyed before the children of Israel. And Yahweh spoke to Manasseh and to his people but they would not hearken. Mm -hmm. Wherefore Yahweh brought up brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria who took Manasseh in chains and bound him with feathers and carried him to Babylon. Mm -hmm. And when Manasseh was in affliction, he besought Yahweh, his Elohim, and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers, and prayed unto him. And he was entreated by him, and heard his supplication, and brought him again to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. <laughs> then Manasseh knew that Yahweh, he was God. <laughs> now after this, he built an, alt an altar wall for the city of Dawi, on the west side of Jahan, in the valley, even to the entrance of the fish gate, and compassed about Ophel, and raised it up a very great height, and put captains of war in all the fortified cities of Yehuda. And he took away the strange gods and the idol out of the house of Yahweh, and all the altars that he had built in the mount of the house of Yahweh, and in Jerusalem, and cast them out of the city. And he repaired the altar of Yahweh, and sacrificed on it peace offerings and thank offerings, and commanded Yehuda to serve Yahweh Elohim of Israel. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the people did sacrifice still in the high places, yet unto Yahweh their Elohim only. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh, and his prayer unto his Elohim, and the words of the seals who spoke to him in the name of Yahweh yeah. Elohim of Israel, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel. His prayer also, and how Elohim was entreated mm -hmm. by him, Verse 19. His prayer also, and how Elohim was entreated by him, and all his sin and his trespass, and the sites on which he built high places, and set up groves and graven images before he was humble, behold, they are written among the sins of the seal. So Manasseh slept with his fathers, and they buried him in his own house, and Ammon his son reigned in his stead. Ammon was 22 years old when he began to reign, and reigned two years in Jerusalem. But Ammon did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh, as did Manasseh, his father. For Ammon sacrificed unto all the great carbon images which Manasseh, his father, had made, and served them, and humbled not himself before Yahweh, as Manasseh, his father, had humbled himself. But Ammon trespassed more and more, and his servants conspired against him and slew him in his own house. But the people of the land slew all those who had conspired against King Ammon, and the people of the land made Josiah, his son, king in his stead. Mm -hmm. 
So the brother saying here then that even though the guy was wicked, he was still the Lord's anointed, right? Yes, sir. He and he did it when y'all were strong. And these people slew him. They for what they did that, right? right? Right. And remember what David said? Uh, 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 uh. Uh, what David did when this young man came came to him and said, look, I saw Saul and so forth. He told me to kill him and I went on and killed him and so forth. And he had Saul's bracelets and so forth and so on. David so said, so, man, go over there and kill that dude. Right. And man, you mean to tell me you didn't have, you had to, you weren't afraid to lift your hand and get Lord's and all? Right. You go kill him. Took care of that. Dude. Well, it shows too that Manasseh with all his wickedness, he, he, he had to be beat down, of course. Once he was beaten down and he looked up and saw Yahweh, then he was restored back into this. Right. But then what happened to it? That iniquity was visited upon his son, wasn't it? Exactly. Seven Chronicles chapter 34, verse 1. Seven Chronicles 34, verse 1. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem 31 years. And he did that which was right in the sight of Yahweh, and walked in the ways of Dawid, his father, and declined neither to the right hand nor to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was yet young, he began to seek after the God of Dawid, his father. And in the twelfth year, he began to purge Yehuda and Jerusalem from the high places and the groves and the carved images and the melted and cast images. Right, he was sick. This brother here was only 16 years old then. Now. Go ahead now. Verse 4. And they broke down the altars of Baalim in his presence, and the images that were on high above them he cut down, and the groves and the carved images, and the, and the molten images <coughs> he broke in pieces and made dust of them and scattered it upon the graves of them who had sacrificed unto them. Mm. And he burned the bones of the priests upon their altars and cleansed Yehuda and Jerusalem. And so did he in the cities of Manasseh and Ephraim and Simeon, even unto Naphtali, in their ruins round about. And when he had broken down the altars and the groves, and had beaten the graven images into powder, and cut down all the idols throughout all the land of Israel, he returned to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Now in the eighteenth year of his reign, when he had purged the land and the house, he sent Shaphan, the son of Athaliah, and Melsiah, the governor of the city, and Yoah, the son of Yoahaz, the recorder, to repair the house of Yahweh, his Elohim. And when they came to Hilkiah, the high priest, they delivered the money that was brought into the house of Elohim, which the Levites who kept the doors had gathered of the hands of Manasseh and Ephraim, and of all the remnant of Israel, and of all Yehuda and Benjamin, and they returned to Jerusalem. And they put it in the hand of the workmen who had the oversight of the house of Yahweh, and they gave it to the workmen who wrought in the house of Yahweh to repair and mend the house. Even to the craftsmen and the builders gave they it to buy hewn stone and timber for couplings, and to floor the houses which the kings of Yehuda had destroyed. And the men did the work faithfully, and the overseers of them were Yehat and Obawahu, the Levites of the sons of Moriah, and Zechariah and Meshulam of the sons of the Kohathites to set it forward, and others of the Levites, all who were, who could skill of instruments of music. Also, they were over the barrels of burdens and were overseers of all who wrought the work in any manner of service. And of the Levites, there were scribes and officers and porters. And when they brought out the money that was brought into the house of Yahweh, Hezekiah the priest found a book of the law of Yahweh given by Moshe. They didn't find the book. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Check that out. They, found, they stumbled up on the going looking for money. They found the book. Found the money. Go ahead and read it. Mm -hmm. Verse 15. And Hezekiah said to Shaphan, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of Yahweh. And Hezekiah delivered the book to Shaphan. And Shaphan carried the book to the king and brought the king word back again, saying, All that was committed to your servants, they are doing. And they have gathered together the money that was found in the house of Yahweh and have delivered it into the hand of the overseers and to the hand of the workmen. Then Shaphan, the scribe, told the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest have given me a book. 
And Shaphan read it before the king. I mean, the land had got so bad, man, that the, that the priest didn't even know what they was doing. They were just doing just about what they wanted to do if they didn't have the book of the law. Right. Go ahead and read, bro. Yes, sir. Verse 19. And it came to pass, when Josiah had heard the words of the law, that he rent his clothes. Mm. And the king commanded Hilkiah and Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, and Abdon, the son of Micah, and Shaphan, the scribe, and Asiah, a servant of the king, said, Go, inquire of Yahweh for me, and for them who are left in Israel and in Yehuda concerning the words of the book that is found. For great is the wrath of Yahweh that is poured out upon us, because our fathers have not kept the word of Yahweh to do all that is written in this book. And Hezekiah and they whom the king had appointed went to Huldah, the prophetess, the wife of Shalon, the son of Tophet, the son of Hazra, keep up the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college, and they spoke to her that effect. Now, in the New Testament, there was a woman named Anna that dwelt in Jerusalem in the college, did she? Right. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, brother? See, one thing about Prophet. them sisters, them sisters have always been around and do what was necessary to do. They weren't in the, in, in the position of priests. But it was always around to do what? To help. Yeah. Like Yahweh told uh, like Yahweh said up in the God, Adam, you need some help. <coughs> I'm to make help for you. Amen. Go ahead and read. Uh, behind every great man, usually, there's a great woman. Uh-oh. Go ahead and read. Verse 23. And she answered them, Thus says Yahweh Elohim of Israel, Tell you the man who sent you to me. Thus says Yahweh, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon its inhabitants, even all the curses that are written in the book which they have read before the king of Yehudah, because they have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be poured out upon this place and shall not be quenched. And as for the king of Yehudah, who sent you to inquire of Yahweh, so shall you say unto him, Thus says Yahweh Elohim of Israel concerning the words which you have heard. Because your heart was tender, and you did humble yourself before Elohim when you heard his words against this place and against its inhabitants, and humbled yourself before me, and did rend your clothes and weep before me, I have even heard you also, says Yahweh. Mm. Behold, I will gather you to your fathers, and you shall be get gathered to your grave in peace. Neither shall your eyes see all the evil that I will bring upon this place and upon the inhabitants of the same. So they brought the king word again. Mm -hmm. Then the king sent and gathered together all the elders of Yehuda and Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of Yahweh and all the men of Yehuda and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the priests and the Levites and all the people great and small. And he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant that was found in the house of Yahweh. And the king stood in his place and made a covenant before Yahweh to walk after Yahweh and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and with all his soul to perform the words of the covenant which are written in this book. And he called all who were present to him in Jerusalem and Benjamin to stand to it. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of Elohim, the God of their fathers. Mm -hmm. And Josiah took away all the abominations out of all the countries that pertain to the children of Israel, and made all who were present in Israel to serve, even to serve Yahweh, their Elohim. And all his days they departed not from following Yahweh, the Elohim of their fathers. Moreover, Josiah kept a Passover unto Yahweh in Jerusalem, and they killed the Passover on the 14th day of the first month. Amen. And he set the priests in their charge and encouraged the priests and encouraged them to the service of the house of Yahweh, and said unto the Levites who taught all Israel who were holy unto Yahweh, Put the holy ark in the house which Slomo, the son of Dawid, king of Israel, did build. It shall not be a burden upon your shoulders. Serve now Yahweh, your Elohim, and his people Israel, and prepare yourselves by the house of your fathers after your courses, 
according to the writing of Dawid, king of Israel, and according to the writing of Slomo, his son. Right. Now, they killed the Passover on the 14th day, right? Mm -hmm. Well, in other words, Passover had to begin on the 13th of the evening. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Why is the brothers wait till the 14th day of sunset to say they keep the Passover? Mm -hmm. Not they're not going into the speech of the bread. You know, Alan, this seems to be one reoccurring thing throughout the whole biblical story that seems to be salvation for most of the participants, and that seems to be humility. Mm -hmm. Humbleness has been something that has saved the king from each, from the beginning unto the end, so it seems that that's some, a, a very important element that all of us need to remember in order to achieve some level of salvation. Right. And you need to go back and read Isaiah 30 chapter. Say, because the daughter of Zion walk party mm -hmm. with the neck stretched forth and warning eyes and so forth and so on, you know, mm -hmm. with all that jewelry and all that stuff, finery. all that finery and everything. So I'm going to take all that junk from it. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So you see, why the poor, hardy, bro. you see why the poor can will more easily inherit the earth. Right. And we do walk hardy. That's why when the brother called, the sister come up to me and said, well, you know, I know so-and-so and so-and-so, but I think when they said that, I'm okay. through with it. <laughs> I'm through with it. You're entitled to your thoughts, but I'm through with it. Everything that you say sounds like, well, I'm all right. I'm through with it all out, but I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Let me read you. Verse 5. And stand in the holy places according to the divisions of the families of your of the fathers of your brethren, the peoples, and after the division of the families of the Levites. Mm -hmm. So kill the Passover and sanctify yourselves and prepare your brethren that they may do according to the word of Yahweh by the hand of Moshe. Mm -hmm. And your fire gave to the people of the flock, lambs and kids, all for the Passover offering. For all who were present to the number of 30,000 and 3,000 bullocks, that these were the king's substance. And his princes gave willingly unto the people, to the priests and to the Levites, Hekiah and Zechariah, and Yehiah, rulers of the house of Elohim, gave unto the priests for the Passover offering 2,600 small cattle and 300 oxen. Hmm. Konaniah also and Shemaiah, and Nethanel, his brethren, and Hashabiah, and Yael, and Yosabad, chief of the Levites, gave unto the Levites for Passover offering 5,000 small cattle and 500 oxen. Mm -hmm. So the service was prepared, and the priests stood in their place, and the Levites in their courses according to the king's commandment. And they killed the Passover, and the priests sprinkled the blood from their hands, and the Levites slayed them. Mm -hmm. And they removed the burnt offerings that they might give according to the divisions of the families of the people to offer unto Yahweh, as it is written in the book of Moshe, and so they did with the oxen. And they roasted the Passover with fire according to the ordinance, but the other holy offerings saw they in pots and in cauldrons and in pans, and divided them speedily among all the people. Mm -hmm. And afterwards they made ready for themselves and for the priests, because the priests, the sons of Aaron, were busy in offerings of burnt offerings and the fat unto night. Therefore the Levites prepared for themselves and for the priests, the sons of Aaron. And the singers, the sons of Asaph, were in their place according to the commandment of Dawid, and Asaph, and Heman, and Yeduthan, the king's seal. And the porters waited at every gate. They might not depart from their servants, for their brethren, the Levites, prepared for them. So all the servants of Yahweh was prepared the same day to keep the Passover and to offer burnt offerings upon the altar of Yahweh according to, to the commandment of King Josiah. And the children of Israel who were present kept the Passover at that time and the Feast of Unleavened Bread seven days. And there was no Passover like that kept in Israel from the days of Samuel the prophet. Neither did all the kings of Israel keep such a Passover as Josiah kept, and the priests and the Levites and all Yehuda and Israel who were present, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. In the 18th year of the reign of Josiah was this Passover kept. After all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Necho, king of Egypt, came up to fight against Cosumus by the Euphrates, and Josiah went out against him. But he sent ambassadors to him, saying, 
What have I to do with you, you king of Yehuda? I come not against you this day, but against the house with which I have war. For Elohim commanded me to make haste. Forbade you from meddling with Elohim who is with me, that he destroy you not. Right, and guess your side the man, you're him. Right. <laughs> God ain't told you to go do nothing, Johnny. I'm gonna right. fight with you. Right. Yes, sir. Verse 22. Nevertheless, your sire would not turn his face from him, but disguise himself, that he might fight with him. And hearken not unto the word of Nico from the mouth of Elohim, and came to fight in the battle of Megiddo. And the archer shot at King, Mos king Josiah, and the king said to his servant, Have me away, for I am sore wounded. His servants therefore took him out of that chariot, and put him in the second chariot that he had, and they brought him to Jerusalem, and he died, and was buried in one of the graves of his father. And all Yehuda and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. Right. Brother disguised himself to go die. Hmm. Well, didn't he, uh, I mean, you just made the comment, and certainly that was a rational comment that any Hebrew Israelite would think, but it seems to me that the problem came up because he didn't consult uh, the prophet concerning that issue before he went into battle. The problem came up because he didn't have no business meddling in other men's matters. Mm -hmm. Right. See, that's what the problem was. The man wasn't coming right. to fight him. He was going to fight somebody else, right? Right. But he's so hard under the collar. He done did so much for the Lord. He wants to jump in the battle, right? Mm -hmm. And he jumped in the battle and died. Mm -hmm. You see, that's that's what the deal was. See, that's what being busy about is another man's matter. See, that's why I don't go to the old covenant camp. That's why I don't fellowship with them brothers. You know why? I know who they serve. Right. They serve the adversary. I don't give a damn whether they know the Israel or not. They serve the adversary, the devil, because they don't believe in the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Amen. You see, so what I do is this. I stay away from these them brothers so my presence won't cause them some problems. Mm -hmm. uh, either uh, the death angel come and I'm in the wrong place. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so I need them brothers long. What, what am I going to fellowship for? Oh, yeah. You see how they dress? Right. I dress the way I want to dress. I don't care how, how nobody else dress. Right. You see, so what, what's the system me fellowship with them? So they can teach me how to speak Hebrew. Y'all already told me, said, when I set up this kingdom, I'm going to turn to the people of the new land. Right. That means what I got to do if I speak Hebrew, I got to go hang out with them to have a conversation <laughs> in Hebrew, right? right. Y'all always say we're stammering lips in another language as I teach this people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they got the businesses over there, you know. I know what the deal is, brother. Talking about that dollar and that power. I know what the whole deal is about. Yeah. They're national right? Yeah. We'll so hang out with each other. That's all. Really. Verse. 2 Kings, chapter 35, verse 25. And Yeremiyahu lamented for Josiah, and all the singing men and the singing women spoke of Josiah and their lamentations to this day, and made them an ordinance in Israel, and behold, they are written in the lamentations. Hold up, he said 2 Kings, 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles, I'm sorry. Right where we are. You read it right, just because it out there. 2 Chronicles, chapter 35, verse 26. Sorry. Now the rest of the acts of Josiah and his goodness, according to that which was written in the law of Yahweh, and his deeds, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Yehuda. Hmm. Then the people of the land took Jehoahaz, the son of Josiah, and made him king in his father's stead in Jerusalem. Jehoahaz was 23 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. And the king of Egypt turned him at Jerusalem. I'm sorry, put down him at Jerusalem. Put him and, down. And the king of Egypt put him down at Jerusalem and found the land and hundred talents of silver and a thousand of gold. And the king of Egypt made Elijah his brother king over Yehuda and Jerusalem and changed his name to Jehoiakim. And Nico took Jehoahaz, his brother, and carried him to Egypt. Okay, 2 Kings 23 and 34. 2 Kings chapter 23 and verse 34. Second Kings 23 and verse 34. Oh, okay. 2 Kings chapter 23 and verse 34. 
unit for the king kid never did just hard one family did it. They stayed there until there was nobody left to put it in. That's what, the, that's, that's what the blessing was. The scepter should not be. Uh, Genesis uh, uh, 49 and 10. The scepter should not be far from Judah, nor law give a law, nor law give a from between his feet until shadow come and tell him and to him shall be gathered of the people. Mm -hmm. Judah was the lion swept among the prey, bro. He raised, he crouched, he raised like an old lion, right? Who's going to put him down? Mm -hmm. Judas is, 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 this is why everybody want to be the house of Judah. Because right. Judah is destined for greatness. Amen. Uh, 2 Kings uh, 23, and verse 34. And Pharaoh Necho made Eliakim, the son of Josiah, king in the stead of Josiah, his father, and changed his name to Jehoiakim, and took Jehoahaz away, and he came to Egypt and died there. And Jehoiakim gave the silver and the gold to Pharaoh, but he taxed the land to give the money according to the commandment of Pharaoh. He exacted the silver and the gold from the people of the land of everyone according to his valuation to give it unto Pharaoh Nico. Now, this is this, this a holy place right there. Put something in the book. Let's so come back here. Let's go in Jeremiah 30, uh, 25 in verse 1. Give me Yahoo 25 in verse 1. Yahoo 25. Verse 1. The word that came to Yahoo concerning all the people of Yehuda in the fourth year of Yehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Yehuda, that was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, which Yahoo the prophet, spoke unto all the people of Yehuda and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, from the thirteenth year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Yehuda, even unto this day, that is the twenty-third year, the word of Yahweh have come unto me, and I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but you have not hearkened. And Yahweh have sent unto you all his servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, but you have not hearkened nor inclined your ear to hear. They said, Turn again now, everyone, from his evil way and from the evil of your doings, and dwell in the land that Yahweh have given unto you and to your fathers forever and ever. And go not out to other gods to serve them and to worship them, and provoke me not to anger with the works of your hand, and I will do you no hurt. <laughs> Yet you have not hearkened unto me, says Yahweh, that you might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt. Therefore, thus says Yahweh of hosts, because you have not heard my word, behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, said Yahweh, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land and against its inhabitants and against all these nations round about and will utterly destroy them and make them in horror and in hissing and perpetual desolation. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the sign of the millstone and the light of the candle. Hmm. And this whole land shall be a desolation and in horror, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it shall come to pass, when 70 years are accomplished, that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, says Yahweh, for their iniquity, and the land of the called in, and will make it perpetual desolation. Mm. And I will bring upon that land all my words that which I have pronounced against it, even all that is written in this book, which Yahweh, I'm sorry, have prophesied against all the nations. For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also, and I will, will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Yehuda, came this word from Yahweh, saying, Thus says Yahweh, Stand in the court of Yahweh's house, and speak unto all the cities of Yehuda, which come to worship in Yahweh's house, all the words that I command you to speak unto them, diminish not a word. If so be, they will hearken and turn every man from his evil way, 
that I may repent of this evil which I purpose to do unto them because of the evil of their doing. And you shall say unto them, Thus says Yahweh, If you will not hearken to me to walk in my law which I have set before you, to hearken to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I sent unto you, both rising up early and sending them, but you have not hearkened, then will I make this house like Shiloh, and will make this city a curse to all the nations of the earth. So the priests and the prophets and all the people heard Yeremiah who speaking these words in the house of God. And to show you that this has already taken place, do you know that everybody that has lived in the land of Israel has had war from generation to generation since we've been out of that land? So it has been a curse to the nations in heaven. Where do you go? Verse 8. Now it came to pass, when Yahweh had ceased speaking all that Yahweh had commanded him to speak unto all the people, that the priests and the prophets and all the people took him, saying, You shall surely die. Mm -hmm. Why have you prophesied in the name of Yahweh, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate without an inhabitant? And all the people were gathered against Yahweh in the house of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. When the princes of Yehuda heard these things, then they came up from the king's house unto the house of Yahweh and sat down in the entrance of the new gate of Yahweh's house. Then spoke the priests and the prophets unto the princes and to all the people, saying, This man is worthy to die, for he hath prophesied against this city as you have heard with your ears. Then spoke Yahweh unto all the princes and to all the people, saying, Yahweh sent me to prophesy against this house and against this city all the words that you have heard. Mm -hmm. Therefore now amend your ways and your doings and obey the voice of Yahweh your Elohim and Yahweh will repent of the evils that he has pronounced against you. As for me, behold, I am in your hands. Do with me as seem of good and right unto you. Mm -hmm. But know for certain that if you put me to death, you shall surely bring innocent blood upon yourselves and upon this city and upon its inhabitants. For of a truth, Yahweh hath sent me unto you to speak all these words in your ears. Then said the princes and all the people unto the priests and to the prophets, This man is not worthy to die. For he hath spoken to us in the name of Yahweh, our Elohim. Mm -hmm. Then rose up certain of the elders of the land and spoke to all the assembly of the people, saying, Micah, the Morastite, prophesied in the days of Hezekiah, king of Yehuda, and spoke to all the people of Yehuda, saying, Thus says Yahweh of hosts, Zion shall be plowed like a field, and Jerusalem shall become heat, and the mountain of the house, and the mountain of the house like the high places of the forest. Right, see? Now he said all these things gonna come upon Jerusalem, right? Now understand that, now let me show you what he did. <coughs> he tore down the house mm -hmm. and kicked the inhabitants out of the land mm -hmm. and caused the name to cease from among men. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Now we know, according to the prophets, that Israel cannot return to the land until just before, uh, uh, well, they won't return to the land then. They won't return to the land until just before the Messiah shows up on the scene. Mm -hmm. Just a few days before the Messiah shows up on the scene is when Judah is going to return uh, uh, to the city of Jerusalem, right? Mm -hmm. That's what's going to make the, the Messiah uh, a return when the army is being besieged both against Judah and Jerusalem, right? Amen. Do you know that everybody that's in that land there by a house is going to be killed off by the beast of the false prophet? Uh, this is why when folks offer me tickets and so forth, man, why don't you go over there and look around? I don't want to see nothing. Right. I might be over there somehow, but no, no, no. I want to stay right here until it's time for me to get out and go over there. Man, but you need to see your life. I'll see it when the time comes. Yeah. What's the sense of me going home and other people can come back and say, hey, you, Pack up that damn house. You got to move it over there. Mm -hmm. father, I, father, right. I got to pack up that house and move it over there because Esau tells us. Right. Uh -huh. See? Exactly. Then the Palestinians come in and say, no, take that house out of water over here and move it down there. Uh -huh. And I'm still a captain moving to and from my own land. Mm -hmm. Ain't got no power. Right? right. Y'all know why? Y'all be kicked us out of the land right. and told us when you can return. Right. Everybody that's in the land of Israel today is in there illegally. We don't know who it is. So it's, it's and y'all going to recompense it for us. So there's an iniquity that Judah is over there today. Of course like there's iniquity. Washington and Benjamin and all of them. They define the true and living God. Right. But see, they're princes. Mm -hmm. So they can do it. See? 
They are princes. Yeah. With no power. See? Brother saying, I'm a prince of the house of Judah. Right. Brother, there's three tribes over here. You don't know which house you come from. Why are you going to tell me you a Judite? Why have I got to believe you a Judite? Because you say you a prince. You a slave. Mm. And that's where Esau, he's going to become prime minister in his land. You saw what happened, didn't you? The next day, they cut off, uh, uh, they cut off, they kicked him out of stopped him from coming in Jerusalem right. and cut off all of the resources they had given him, jobs and so forth. They right. come in Jerusalem and work, they were selling rugs and a whole lot of other things they were doing in Jerusalem. Kicked him out of the city and if it wasn't for the people at Haifa, they would have starved to death. Exactly. The people at Haifa sent them water and food uh, 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 on once a week by truck. Right. See, simply because y'all we had kicked him out of the land. And check this out. They, they don't believe in the great king, the one that's going to come and redeem them. But the father that they say they believe in is the one that they're in complete disobedience. Of course. Of course, my brother. You know where they come from? Yeah. They come from that curse. Go and tell his people, he you indeed. I say, hey, child. Right. Go and tell you, go and tell his people, he you indeed, but see you now. See you indeed, but uh, uh, understand now. Make the heart of this people get fat. Bad. And ain't they fat? Real fat. How can a brother walk around in this in this land, a land of the uh, 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 land of the free and home of the brave? How can a brother walk around in this captivity talking about, I'm a prince. Trying to slay. Right, I so, said, well, where's the man that you ruled on? <laughs> well, we got a place over there. No, 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 no. The United States government contain, uh, 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 claim eminent domain. Yes, sir. They come in there and tear down that little place you got and build a parking lot there. There ain't nothing you can say. And you gonna tell me you're a prince over there? Right. Mm -hmm. But you know, Elvis, it should be a sign to everybody that those brothers who claim to be princes and claim to be king of Israel, they either in dire straits or they in jail. Of course. So they should look at that. Of course. All of them got in trouble one time or another. Of course. We're going to get in trouble too, so. Ain't that fair. But see, the thing of it is, is this. You're not going to get in trouble because you're in violation of God's law. Right, amen. See, amen. you're going to get in trouble because the Messiah said, whosoever king of you is going to think he did God a service. Yeah, right. exactly. You're going to get in trouble because of the fact that you are telling the truth. Let's go that testimony. That testimony. Let's go uh oh not in the library. Don't say I'm Let's go to Revelation chapter 6. And pick this up for verse 9. Revelation 6 and verse 9. Verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of Elohim and for the testimony which they had. I saw who? The souls of those that were slain for the word of Elohim and for the testimony they held, right? Revelation uh, 12 chapters show you when the dragon was cast out, he went to make war with the remnant of the woman's seed who had keep the commandments of, of, of God and have the testimony of Yahshua, the Messiah, right? Yes, we got brothers talking about their princes don't even believe in the Messiah. Check that out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Adonai, holy and true, do you not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Amen. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season unto their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. That should be what? Killed as they were should be fulfilled, right? right. Let's go back in the book of Daniel. Daniel uh, 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 11, we picked that up at, uh, at uh, pick this up at verse 29, Daniel 11, verse 29. So dying for the right thing is going to be released, isn't it? Of course. Happy are you? Yes, sir, brother. Yeah. That's why I told you a long time about the man, you know, when I was out there in the street, man, I was worried about that. Right. <laughs> but since I've been under the blood of the Messiah, man, if it comes right now, I'm not worried about it anymore. Because I know that a de the death, 
of a servant of God is nothing but the beginning of a life left. Amen. 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 All about that. Y'all can be what y'all want. My salvation is already sealed, and I know it. Right. Amen. Amen. Uh, that don't mean I'm going to change to it. But it's sealed. I'm going to hang with you until they send that chariot. No, right? no, no. I'm getting y'all away from you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hanging with you, brother. That's why when I get out of church, I go in my office. <laughs> Close the door and get y'all away from me. Pick <laughs> uh, uh, this up at Daniel 11, verse 29. Yes, sir. At the time appointed. He shall return and come toward the yeah. south, but it shall not be as the former or as the latter. Now, this is after the battle between the Antichrist, oh, yeah. the Muslims in the Middle East, and uh, 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 the beast, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Verse 30. For the ships of Greece shall come against him. Therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with those who forsake the Holy Covenant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that make up death. Right. Esau is going to start sacrificing to his feast, right? Mm -hmm. And he's going to sacrifice for three and a half years. And at the end of that three and a half years, the Pope's going to come in there and say, well, look, I'm king now. I'm God. I'm on the scene, right? Right. Go ahead and see what's going to happen here. For the people who may not know, who is Esau? People in the land today talking about their youth. Okay. Well, there's two people in the land talking about their youth. The one that's yeah. Jews is called the Jews. They're the ones saying they're the house of Judah. That's what I'm talking about when I say Esau. Now, the Palestinians, Israel is Palestine. Amen. We're the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. So the Palestinians is uh, Moab and Ammon, uh, Abraham nephew, Lot's two lords. They've even exalted themselves against our boy. Mm -hmm. when I, but when I say uh, uh, the Jews, I'm talking about Esau. Yeah. Go ahead and read it. Verse 31. And all shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that make of death. And the Messiah said, When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, who shall believe, let him understand. Amen. Then let him that be in Judea flee to the mountain. Mm -hmm. Let the him that is in the house uh, don't go back in to take his coat, right? Because there's going to be a time of trouble like it never was and never will be. Mm -hmm. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. Mm -hmm. Go ahead now. Verse 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flattery. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do it. But the people that do, doing the Holy Shammah, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits, right? Amen. Wait, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 33. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame, by captivity and by spoil many days. Mm, amen. Now when they shall fall, they shall be helped with a little help. But many shall cleave to them with flatteries. But many gonna still cleave to them with flatteries, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead for that jump, right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 33. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. Right, see, yeah. you got the opportunity to do what you need to do now. Amen. This is why I tell y'all, Yahweh brought you here to put you to work. Amen. If you don't want to get to work, you better get out of here. Amen. I'll tell you why. If you ain't got no work, what you gonna offer? What sacrifice are you gonna offer for your sin? Hallelujah. You ain't got nothing. You got a clean slate, ain't you? Mm -hmm. Hmm. I believe. <laughs> See, y'all uh, you do the work ahead of time. If not, just say <coughs> you get in here and you don't do the work, and the ship that you own when you leave here goes to Europe. Mm. Instead of to that wilderness, right? Oh. You're going to have to deal, you're going to have to, the, the, the beast is going to cause you so much problems, it's gonna be, you're going to be scared to go to sleep, scared to wake up. Amen. But see, that's to make you do what? Make you do your job then. Once that beast gets the breathing down your neck, yes, then you'll go to work. Mm. You know how we do things. We ain't going to do things until the white folks jump on our butt, then we go do what we got to. Right. right. <laughs> uh, let's go back to where we were. Question in the back, Yeah. Yeah, I know that uh, 
Messiah had returned, right? He was in jail. <laughs> I don't know where they got that. I ain't read the book, no. He was in jail. And then after he got out of jail, he was walking down the street. And while he was walking down the street, my people just disappeared. <laughs> Gone on our camera while he was walking down the street. Biggest lies I've been told. See? But guess who put that junk together? Judah. Hmm. Our own people put that junk together, see. Mm -hmm. What wow. we did was this. We fed off the Europeans and said, well, we're going to get back to what's really going down there and show just what the Europeans was talking about. Mm -hmm. Right. Everybody talking about heaven ain't going there. Mm -hmm. Ain't that what black folks used to say? Right. Mm -hmm. Everybody talking about heaven ain't going there. And that's just what it means. <laughs> Everybody just talking about heaven ain't going there. <laughs> hey, Messiah is coming here. <laughs> <laughs> the brothers and sisters that came over here slaves, People talk about how illiterate they were and Bro. so forth and so on. Y'all ought to read some of the letters that they wrote yes. to some of the relatives in this country here. Uh -huh. Them folks knew how to speak this language when they got here. The slave trade started long before they brought the first slaves. So they had time to teach them. How do you think the, the, the master went out there, he got 500 slaves to go out there, I want y'all to fly that field over, I want you to do this, I want you to do that, they went and did it. Right. They didn't have to have no interpreters. <laughs> well, they had been under the occupation of the Romans anyway, right? Right. <coughs> so they knew all the languages of the other lands, right? Of course they did. Our people always spoke many languages, man. That's why right. uh, 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 a lot of times you read in the prophets where people came up and said something. They weren't speaking in uh, in, 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 in the Jews' language. They were speaking in their own language. Mm -hmm. But we understood what they were saying. Right. Let's go back and pick this up when we were in Jeremiah. Right? Where were you? Daniel.
that they should not give him into the hand of the people to put him to death. Okay, uh, Second Kings, uh, Second Kings, uh, uh, twenty-four and verse one. Second Kings twenty-four and uh, verse one. In his days, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up, and Jehoiakim became his servant three years. Then he turned and rebelled against him. And Yahweh sent against him bands of the Chaldeans, and bands of the Syrians, and bands of the Moabites, and bands of the children of Ammon, and sent them against Yehuda to destroy it, according to the word of Yahweh, which he did speak by his servants, the prophets. Mm -hmm. Surely at the, at the commandment of Yahweh came this upon Yehuda to remove them out of his sight for the sins of Manasseh according to all that he did and also for the innocent blood that he shed. For he filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, which Yahweh would not pardon. Mm -hmm. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Yehuda? So Jehoiakim slept with his fathers, and Jehoiachin, his son, reigned in his stead. Mm -hmm. And the king of Egypt came not again any more out of his land. For the king of Babylon had taken from the river of Euphrates, the river of Egypt. Okay, I'm sorry. Verse 7. And the king of Egypt came not again any more out of his land. For the king of Babylon had taken from the river of Egypt unto the river of Euphrates all that pertained to the king of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months, and his mother's name was Nehoshtah, the daughter of Elnathan of Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh, according to all that his father had done. At that time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came against the city, and his servants did besiege it. And Jehoiachin, king, the king of Yehuda, went out to the king of Babylon, he and his mother, and his servants, and his princes, and his officers. And the king of Babylon took him in the eighth year of his reign. And you know what? No, that was that guy. Go ahead and read it. <laughs> and he carried out from there all the treasures of the house of Yahweh and the treasures of the king's house and cut in pieces all the vessels of gold which Shlomo king of Israel had made in the temple of Yahweh as Yahweh had said and he carried away all Jerusalem and all the princes and all the mighty men of battle even ten thousand captains and all the craftsmen and smiths none remained except the poorest sort of the people of the land and he carried away Jehoiachim to Babylon, and the king's mother, and the king's wife, and his officers, and the might of the land, those carried me into captivity from Jerusalem to Babylon. Now, they got released. I think, uh, I think some of you sisters might have seen the pictures of those released uh, in the Bible clan. You see the release where the king of Assyria and different kings was carrying uh, the house of Judah away, carrying that uh, menorah. Right, mm -hmm. and you check the uh, the way they had the hair tied and it all cut off right there at the edge, mm -hmm. right, just, right, right below the ear. So y'all have seen pictures that were that was actually done by artists in other lands in those days that archaeologists have dug up to let you know that the Bible is right on the money. Mm -hmm. And folks, take tell me King James wrote it, but he was a monster. He did. Okay. He wrote everything just like it happened. Okay. Amen. Go ahead, Lee. Verse 16, and all were men of might, even 7,000, and craftsmen, and smiths a thousand, all who were strong and out for war, even them the king of Babylon brought captive to Babylon. And the king of Babylon made Mataniah, his father's brother, king in his stead, and changed his name to Zedekiah. Now, this was during the first deportation, right? Mm -hmm. This was the deportation that Daniel was in. See, they, they took the princes first, right? Mm -hmm. And Daniel was a prince in Egypt, was mm -hmm. I mean, in, in Israel, was mm -hmm. Okay. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, those brothers were princes in the land. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. 
Yes, sir. Verse 18. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Yermiyahu of Libnah. And Zedekiah did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. But through the anger of Yahweh, it came to pass in Jerusalem and Yehuda, until he had cast them out from his presence, that Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. Ah, uh, Jeremiah 21 and verse 1. <coughs> Jeremiah what now? 21 and verse 1. Oh, Jeremiah 21 and verse 1. You know, as Ella, as we're reading this, I was noticing how Nebuchadnezzar was even called a servant of God, of Ella Hume. Mm -hmm. Even though this was evil. Sure. So one thing we call a servant, and he was even a servant of the most high, and still to be a servant for the negative rather than the positive. Satan is a servant. Right. Amen. Amen. Well, he's just doing it, just carrying out yeah. Yahweh's will. Satan is a servant. Remember when he brought uh, Cyrus in, he <coughs> shall call Cyrus a servant. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, all of us service are to a living God. By the way, you serve him or not, you still serve mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, uh, me and a brother uh, uh, had a conversation the other night. He said, you know, uh, uh, God will that all men should be saved. And if you will that all men be saved, why ain't got enemies? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Why those enemies going to end up in that lake of fire? Mm -hmm. Simply because they were appointed to that. Somebody, prophet, prophecies were, were, were made. Somebody got to stand in, sta in, in that stand of whatever the prophets are saying. Exactly. When he talked about the abomination of desolation, it's Yahweh who brought the audience for a man. See? Uh, this ain't nothing that man just concocted on his own. Amen. Yahweh let Satan loose on him. He said, uh, in Revelation 12, in Revelation 12 chapter, said there appeared another one, one in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, the moon on, on her feet. Well, that's talking about Israel. It said, and there appeared another one in heaven, a great red dragon, right. having seven heads, ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, right? right? right. Well, these things was already prophesied that it was going to take place from the book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. So Yahweh had already, these people aren't born yet. Haven't been born at that time. And Yahweh had already done one, appointed them to death. Right. That's why I tell people, you can't serve Yahweh unless he wants you to. Amen. We look at man and say, well, you know, man is this, man is that, man just like the beast out there in the field. Yeah, right. That's what he is. Right. Yahweh is saving him because that's who he want to save, and you can't serve him unless he wants you to be saved. Not in the capacity of salvation. Now, all of us serve him. All, all mankind serving the righteous and the wicked. Mm -hmm. The wicked do wicked because that's what he wants them to do. Right. The righteous do righteous because that's what he wills for them to do. The mm -hmm. perfect example there is, is Solomon, right, brother? Right. Yahweh could have kept Solomon from doing work. what he did. Right. Right. Wise man. Right. Work. He said there will never be a man like as, as much wisdom as he, and never will be another man as much wisdom as him. Now the Messiah said a greater than Solomon. Right. He didn't say a man with more wisdom. In his youth, anyway. So, yeah, Solomon did all right. You got over. What you? What made you? Why, why do you think that Yahweh allowed the adversary, the devil, to come in? There? He could have just as well sent the prophet to Solomon and said, Solomon, the women that you've been married, you done got old now. Right. And then women, you can't cut the mustard anymore. <laughs> and then women, that you got, they gonna cause you to fall away. Right. They don't want you to be a god in their land because man, it takes 11 or 12, 15 days for them to go all the way back home to worship their god. So they gonna cause you to, they gonna try to cause you to be a god in their land. Don't you do that? Right. Y'all, we could have went to Solomon and uh, did that, but he didn't want to. You know why? He had to tear this kingdom down so you could be saved. Amen. Got to do with you. That's what you got to do. With. Uh oh. 19 and 1. 21 and 1. 21 and 1. Jeremiah 21. The word which came to Yahweh from Yahweh when King Zedekiah sent him unto Hashur, the son of Malachi, Micaiah, I'm sorry, Micaiah, and Stephaniah, the son of Melchiah, the priest, said, Inquire, I pray you, of Yahweh for us. For Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, maketh war against us. If so be that Yahweh will deal with us according to all his wondrous works, that he may go up from us. Then said Yahweh unto them, Thus shall you say to Zedekiah, Thus says Yahweh Elohim of Israel, Behold, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hands, 
with which you fight against the king of Babylon and against the Chaldeans, who besiege you without the walls, and I will assemble them into the midst of this city. Right, you shouldn't be, you, you gonna inquire me? You of all people? Mm. You Zedekiah? Uh-uh, I'm gonna assemble all these folks right here in the middle of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, you fight against that. Go ahead and read it, though. Verse five, and I myself will fight against you with an outstretched hand and with a strong arm, even in anger and in fury and in great wrath. Uh -oh. And I will smite the inhabitants of this city, both man and beast. They shall die of a great pestilence. Man, it got so bad in the, in the city, man, people ate their own children. Yeah. I mean, they ate dog doo doo. Right. Mm. They ate whatever they could get their hands on that the, the famine was so bad in the city. Go ahead and read it. Mm. See, when y'all get on your case, you got a problem. Mm. You got a problem. You got a problem with Grandma's washing powder won't take off. You got you a serious problem. Go ahead and read it. Verse 7. And afterwards, says Yahweh, I will deliver Zedekiah, king of Yehuda, and his servants, and the people, and such as are left in this city from the pestilence, from the sword, and from the famine, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of their enemies, and into the hand of those who seek their life, and he shall smite them with the edge of the sword. He shall not spare them, neither have pity, nor have mercy. And unto this people you shall say, Thus says Yahweh, Look, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. <laughs> he that abideth in this city shall die by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. But he that goeth out and falleth to the Chaldeans that besiege you, he shall live. And his life shall be unto him for a prey. Right. They didn't want to believe that. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah come with that. This a man. You done sided with them folks over there. Right. And they took that brother. And they wouldn't kill him because the prophets delivered him out of their hand. But they took that brother and let that brother, put that brother down in the king's uh, 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 dungeon in the mud. In the muck and mire. And that's, that's how the king of Babylon knew that he wasn't all <coughs> part of it. He was down in the mud. And when he came and got him, he brought Jeremiah and said, Look, man, you don't have to go down to Babylon. You go to Babylon, you go to Egypt, you stay here, you go anywhere you want to go. Because he knew that he was a prophet of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read it. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, verse 10. For I have set my face against this city for evil and not for good, says Yahweh. It shall be given into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. Mm -hmm. And touching the house of the king of Yehuda, say, Hear the word of Yahweh. O house of Dawid, thus says Yahweh, Execute judgment in the morning, and deliver him that is fall out of the hand of the oppressor. Let my fury go out like fire, and burn that none can quench it, because of the evil of your doing. Mm -hmm. Behold, I am against you, O inhabitant of the valley, and rock of the plain, says Yahweh, who say, Who shall come down against us? or who shall enter into our habitation. But I will punish you according to the fruit of your doings, Amen. says Yahweh, Amen. and I will kindle a fire in her forest, and it shall devour all things round about you. Mm -hmm. Thus, says Yahweh, go down to the house of the king of Yehuda and speak that this word, and say, Hear the word of Yahweh, O king of Yehuda, who sit upon the throne of Yahweh, you and your servants and your people that enter in by these gates. Thus says Yahweh, execute judgment and righteousness and deliver the spoil out of the hand of the oppressor and do no wrong, do no violence to the stranger, the fatherless or the widow, neither shed innocent blood in this place. His hand was stretched out still, wasn't it? Right. He right. said, I'll turn for my fierce wrath if you do what I tell you to do, right? Mm -hmm. But you're not Jake here. Jake wouldn't do what Jake wanted to do. Mm -hmm. See? Jake go and pray to the Lord about this and the Lord bring it to him, and then Jake turn right around and do just what is in Jake's wicked, mm -hmm. wicked heart. Right. Go ahead and read it. People talk about God, man. People, folks don't care about God. Folks care about what they're going to do. They God. Yeah. They're they going to create him in their own image. Right. That's what they want to do. Go ahead and read, bro. Verse 4. But if you do this thing indeed, then shall there enter in by the gates of this house king sitting upon the throne of Dawi, riding in chariots and on horses, he and his servants and his people. Right, if you do this thing, I'm going to turn back everything, and the king still going to come into this city, riding upon horses. The land is going to wax fat, right? But you know what? 
he already knew that these brothers wasn't going to do what was right. right. You know why? These brothers thought they was gods, man. Right. Mm -hmm. Hmm. What a small thing. Right. Me, myself, man, I even think I'm a god, man. Right. You know, uh, uh, you know, I think sometimes, you know, I, I sit down and I say, you know, I look at the things that when me and my Isha hooked up, all the vows that she made. You know why she made them vows? Because she she believed that that's what I wanted her to do. Right. Mm. That's why I backed up to look here. You don't have to do none of that stuff. Right. Man, and now I care. Amen. And I started Let me finish. Go ahead. Very fine. Mm. But if you will not hear these words, I swear by myself, says Yahweh, that this house shall become a desolation. Mm. But thus says Yahweh unto the king's house of Yehuda, you are Gilead unto me and the head of Lebanon. Yet surely I will make you a wilderness and cities which are not inhabited. And there was a bomb for Gilead. Remember that? Oh, yeah. There was a bomb for Gilead, but you know what happened, man? Them folks in Israel said, man, I don't want to deal with that. Right. Who's the Lord that I should obey when he had to say? Right. Huh? I can't see him. I can't touch him. I can't feel him, but I trust in your sword here I got in my hand. Right. Go ahead, me, brother. Verse 7. And I will prepare destroyers against you, every one with his weapons, and they shall cut down your choice cedars and cast them into the fire. Mm -hmm. And many nations shall pass by this city, and they shall say every man to his neighbor, Why have Yahweh done thus to this great city? Then they shall answer, because they have forsaken the covenant of Yahweh, their Elohim, and worship other gods, and serve them. Because they have done what? Forsaken the covenant of their gods, right? And worship other gods and serve them, right? Right. Check this out. It's another teacher in this city here, young brother. Mm -mm. Young brother. Call in on the radio trying to talk about things, and the man asking the Ten Commandments, and he could name the three. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Big man. Big. Uh-oh. Don't read, man. Verse 10. Weep not for the dead, neither bemoan him, but weep sore for him that goeth away, for he shall return no more, nor see his native country. Mm -hmm. Man, that sounds like this so-called Negro <laughs> young brother. Man, that couldn't be the people in Israel. Today. No, sir, brother. Uh-uh. No, you know, sir, the people that left out of that land, but they never did see their country no more. They, uh, Esau, they was in, 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 uh, in Israel after Israel fell, they went from fell, they went up into uh, Europe. He was able to go back in the time he wanted to. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jake couldn't go nowhere because he couldn't drink all that water from between him and Israel. Verse <laughs> 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 11. For thou says Yahweh touching Shalom, the son of Josiah, king of Yehuda, who reigned instead of Josiah, his father, who went forth out of him out of this place. Now, a brother came to him one night talking about uh, he was going into the lineage in the Bible of, of the Messiah, and he tried to show. See, this is why Paul told us not to be fussing about endless genealogies right. and, and strivings about law, which leads to nothing but conflict. Right. He didn't understand that a whole lot of folks had two names. Mm -hmm. Just like we know that Jehoahaz was Josiah's uh, son. Why? Mm -hmm. Why? Call him Shalom. He did Right. But see, what that brother failed to understand is that his wife, Mary and Joseph, was out of the house of, of, of David, right? right? So it gave Joseph lineage in one place, and Mary's lineage in the other. Right. Like knowledge, like understanding. But see, he read the bus. You know why? Finding that meathead from Cincinnati, Zeru Babel. Mm. Uh -oh. mm. Thank God his name means confused. There you go. What's <laughs> up? <laughs> <laughs> One of them brothers that we see when he's reading in the book and it says, Jesus Christ, he says, J.C. Right. Mm. Yeah, that's what they do, brother. Here's the run down there. Black it out. You know, we prayed one time, brother. We prayed in the name of the Son of God, uh, Yahshua the Messiah. Brother, he left. Of course. He said, yeah, God, we couldn't deal with that. Cool. Right. Go ahead and Verse 11. But thou says Yahweh, touching Shalom, the son of Josiah, king of Yehuda, who reigned instead of Josiah, his father, who went forth out of this place, he shall not return there any more. But he shall die in the place where they have led him captive, and shall see this land no more. 
Woe unto him who builds his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by wrong, who use his neighbor's service without wages and give him not for his work, who says, I will build myself a wide house and large chambers and cut out windows, and it is paneled with cedar and painted with vermilion. Right, got cedar and all in the ceilings and everything got cedar, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, bro. Yes, sir. Verse 15. Shall you reign because you clothe yourself in cedar? Did not your father eat and drink and do judgment and justice, and then it was well with him? Mm -hmm. He judged the cause of the poor and needy. Then it was well with him. Was not this to know me, says Yahweh? Amen. But your eyes and your heart are not but for your covetousness, mm -hmm. and for shedding innocent blood, and for oppression, and for violence to do it. Mm. Therefore, thus says Yahweh concerning your whole king, the son of Josiah, king of Yehuda, they shall not lament for him, saying, Ah, oh, my brother, ah, uh, ah, oh, my sister. They shall not lament for him, saying, Ah, oh, Adonai, ah, oh, ah, oh, his glory. <laughs> he shall be buried with the burial of an ass, mm. drawn and cast forth beyond the gates of Jerusalem. Mm. Go up to Lebanon and cry <laughs> out, and lift up your voice in Bashan, and cry out from the passage. For all your lovers are destroyed. I spoke unto you in your prosperity, but you said, I will not hear you. Mm -hmm. what you got to say. Mm -hmm. I'm doing all right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've been blessing me. God bless me. I'm doing fine. I ain't going to hear nothing you're going to say. Right. I'm going to follow the wicked imaginations of my own mind. Right. I got me a house. Right. Good job. Got me a good job. Yeah. Make a free cover. All right. I ain't sick. Bridge your age food. All right. Right. Bridge your got food all in. I'm doing all right. Right. Yeah, I ain't going to do nothing. I'm going to do, I'm going to follow the imagination of my own heart. I'm not going to go and find out instructions about this and instructions about right. that. I'm just going to do what I want to do. Right. Vacation is right. Right. You don't need to the same thing, brother. I went to the Bob shop the other day over there and on Bastion Street, and uh, our brother Brown, mm -hmm. you're watching the shows, bro, mm -hmm. but he never shows up. Of course not, and guess what? The nigga still think he has. <laughs> <laughs> uh, many, many years we've been going over there, right. he still think he's nice. Uh, somebody back there, shut them youngers up. They ain't got no business being back there making all that noise. Who back there? Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Yemiyahu, chapter 22, verse 21. I spoke unto you in your prosperity, but you said, I will not hear. This have been your matter from your youth, that you obey not my voice. Right, and all of us do the same thing. Before we came into the Word, we were accustomed to doing what we want to do. Right. So we do part of what the Lord say, and then we be part of what we say. <laughs> Don't mean that. Verse 22. The wind shall eat up all your pastors, and your lovers shall go into captivity. Surely then shall you be ashamed and confounded for all your wickedness. Mm -hmm. O inhabitant of Lebanon, who make your nest in the cedars, how gracious shall you be when pains come upon you, the pain as of a woman in travail. As I live, says Yahweh, through Kaniah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Yehuda, were the signet upon my right hand, yet would I pluck you from them. Right, he said, you were the signet on my right hand, but I'm going to take you off my right hand, mm. right? Go ahead, bro. Mm. Verse 25. And I will give you into the hand of those who seek your life, and into the hand of those whose face you fear, even into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of the called in. Mm -hmm. And I will cast you out and your mother who bore you into another country, where you were not born, and there shall you die. Mm -hmm. But to the land to which they desire to return, there shall they not return. Right, and guess what? He told Zedekiah, he said, you're going to Babylon, but you ain't going to even see it. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And I guess his brother say, now, nah, can I go to Babylon? They don't see it. I'm going to be there. Mm -hmm. King put his eyes out. Yes, mm -hmm. Put him in prison and kept him in there 20 years. Then let him out and dressed it. 
and let him <laughs> sit down among the people, fed him every day, right? Mm, right. Humble them. Of course it did, brother, 20 years of being blind and in the prison. It takes, it's nothing, it's nothing like a good disease to make you turn to the Lord. Mm. <laughs> Any kind of hardship. <laughs> so when the plague's on the giant, oh, brother you mess around and get the maids or something, man, he be begging, maybe crying cry, all over them cups. At the temple brother. every day. Right. right. <laughs> right. Holy walking, walking softly, <laughs> won't you break, break in? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Go ahead and read it, brother. Yeah, bro. Yahoo, chapter 22, verse 28. Is this man, Coniah, a despised, broken idol? Is he a vessel in which is no pleasure? Why are they cast out, he and his seed, and are cast into a land which they know not? Mm -hmm. O earth, earth, hear the word of Yahweh. Thus says Yahweh, write this man childish, a man that shall not prosper in his days. But no man of his seed shall prosper sitting upon the throne of thy weed and ruling any more in you. And you bring that to pass. Mm -hmm. Second Kings 25. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Second Kings 25. Mm -hmm. So really what we're getting a chance to see is a very small, uh, have a little understanding at times the most high outlines our ways as our future is unfolding because with these individuals he's basically letting us know what their future will be you have to learn how to follow the spirit exactly mm -hmm. you have to learn how to see what the spirit is doing mm -hmm. and then follow the spirit not your heart follow the spirit mm -hmm. see a lot of time with our heart We'll say, well, I do this and I guess I do that. That'll be good for the congregation and so forth and so on. And the spirit comes and says, don't you do that. Mm -hmm. Right. See, because I'm going to do just and such. And mm -hmm. then you got to back up, right? Then you got to rub it on in your chest. Oh, man, so and so and so and so and so. You such and such. Nigga, sit down. Right. That's all you got to do. Sit down. I mean, I'm, I'm doing what I think's best. You got to follow the spirit. Amen. Go ahead and do 17, chapter 25, verse 1. And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came, he and all his hosts, against Jerusalem, and encamped against it, and they built forts against it round about. And the city was besieged until the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. Eighteen months. Eighteen months, brother. <coughs> Let me tell you something. You got a couple million people in the city. You let this city of Atlanta be besieged 18 months and see what happens. Right. You're supposed to be eating up each other. Uh, Don't leave us. Verse 3. And on the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine prevailed in the city, and there was no bread for the people of the land. And the city was broken up, and all the men of war fled by night by the way of the gate. was good in the day of this calamity. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Verse 6. So they took the king and brought him up to the king of Babylon at Riblah, and they gave judgment upon him. Now, look what happened to his brother because of his unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. See, folks talk about, oh, God is sweet. Mm. Man, God's terrible. Right. Mm -hmm. Yahweh is terrible. Mm -hmm. You can look at the beginning of the creation and tell he was terrible. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. He created everything in chaos. <laughs> Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 7. And they slew the son of Zedekiah before his eyes, and put out the eyes of Zedekiah, and bound him with feathers of brass, and carried him to Babylon. The last thing he saw was all his boys being put to death. Right. Mm -hmm. His seed perished from the way he did. Right. Then now, Yahweh sent. Remember now. When we go back up to David, remember what happened with David and Uriah and Hittite? Right. Yahweh told him to go sit and send blood in his house, right? Right. See it right there? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brother, so seeing that the king was sitting on the earthly throne of Yahweh, they were just sitting ducks in the time that wrath came. That's right? all they were. Because uh, the king, when Yahweh told David, I'm going to send blood in your house, boy, mm -hmm. that was the end of that whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Then that whole thing just gave Solomon peace because he was David's son, because somebody had to build a house and he wanted Solomon to build. Jedediah had to build that house. Go ahead and read. Verse 8. 
And in the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, which is the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuchadnezzar, captain of the God, a servant of the king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem. And he burned the house of Yahweh, and the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem, and every great man's house burned he with fire. And all the army of the Chaldeans who were with the captain of the God broke down the walls of Jerusalem round about. Now the rest of the people who were left in the city and the fugitives who fell away to the king of Babylon with the remnant of the multitude did Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the God, carry away. Mm -hmm. But the captain of the God left of the poor of the land to be vine dressers and husbands, and the pillars of bronze that were in the house of Yahweh, and the bases, and the brazen sea that were was in the house of Yahweh, did the Chaldeans break in pieces and carried the bronze of them to Babylon. Mm -hmm. And the pots and the shovels and the snuffers and the spoons and all the vessels of brass with which they ministered took their way. And the fire pans and the bases and such things as were of gold as gold and of silver as silver, the captain of the God took away. The two pillars, one sea and the bases which Slomo had made for the house of Yahweh, the brass of all these vessels was beyond weight. The height of the one pillar was 18 cubits, and the capital upon it was brass, and the height of the capital, three cubits, and the braided works and the pomegranates upon the capital round about, all of brass, and like unto these had the second pillar with braided work. Now, remember now, Solomon made these things out of gold. All right. Right? Right. And then as they went back and rebuilding the temple and so forth, what did they do? They made these things out of brass. And step down, son. Yes, sir. Let me read them. Verse 18. And the captain of the guard took Zariah, the chief priest, and Sephaniah, the second priest, and the three keepers of the door, and out of the city he took an officer who was set over the men of war, and five men of them who were, who were in the king's presence, who were found in the city, and the principal scribe of the host, who mustered the people of the land, and sixty men of the people of the land who were found in the city. And Nebuchadnezzar, captain of the guard, took these and brought them to the king of Babylon at Riblah. And the king of Babylon smote them and slew them at Riblah in the land of Hamath. So Yehuda was carried away out of their land. And as for the people who remained in the land of Yehuda, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had left, even over them he made Galilee, the son of Ahakam, the son of Shaphan, governor. Right, he made him a governor, not a king, a governor. Mm -hmm. so and with all the captains of the armies, they and their men heard that the king of Babylon had made Gedaliah governor. There came to Gedaliah at Mishpah, even Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, and Jehonan, the son of Kerioth, and Sariah, the son of Tanhumeth, the Natophathite, and Ye Ye Yezaniah, the son of a Machathite, then their men. And Gedaliah swore to them and to their men, and said unto them, Fear not to be the servants of the Chaldeans, Dwell in the land and serve the king of Babylon, and it shall be well with you. Hmm. But it came to pass in the seventh month that Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, the son of Elishama of the sea royal, came, and ten men with him, and smote Gedaliah, so that Gedaliah died, and the Jews, and the Chaldeans, who were with him at Mishpah, and all the people, both small and great, and the captain of the armies, arose and came to Egypt, for they were afraid of the Chaldeans. Hmm. And it came to pass in the 37th year of the captivity of Jehoiachim, king of Yehuda, in the 12th month, on the 7th and 20th day of the month, that evil Mirabai, king of Babylon, in the year that he began to reign, did liberate Jehoiachim, king of Yehuda, from prison. And he spoke kindly to him and set his throne above the throne of the kings that were with him in Babylon and changed his prison garments and he did eat his food regularly before him all the days of his life. And his alliance was a continual alliance, allowance, I'm sorry, given him by the king a daily rate for every day, all the days of his life. Okay, now if you want to read what happened to Samaria, read the book of Esther. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do, we're going to go in the book of Daniel and see what happened to uh, some of the house of Judah. Daniel 1. Pick that up Fellas, do you suppose the Michaelites were uh, uh, the same thing that was later called the Michaelites? 
I don't think so. They could have been, but I don't think so. Maccabean was a word that was, Maccabees was a word that was given to him by the people that means the hammer. And because of the hell that they were raised, the Maccabees were raised and trying to take the land. Were these the four that was left in the land? What? The Maccabees. No, the Maccabees come, came later on, but the Maccabees came a long time after this. This, this is taking place in uh, the five, the, the Nebuchadnezzar came in Jerusalem in 606 B.C. What you're talking about happened, A.D. Okay. Okay. Daniel chapter 1 and verse 1. Yes, sir. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Yehuda, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Adonai gave Jehoiakim, king of Yehuda, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of Elohim, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God. And he brought the vessel into the treasure house of his God. And the king spoke unto Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he would bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and gifted in knowledge and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the called in. Mm -hmm. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years that at the end of them they might stand before the king. Can you imagine eating meat and drinking wine for three years? Oh, no, nah, <laughs> brother, you've been in bad shape, won't you? Yeah. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Verse 6. Now among these were of the children of Yehuda, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azario, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and unto Azario of Benegal. Now he gave him the name of his gods. Check this out. He got him some servants now, right? So he's going to give him the name of his gods. Oh, ain't that deep? <laughs> yeah, go ahead, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Mm -hmm. Now Elohim had brought Daniel into favor and compassion with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king, who have appointed your meat and your drink. But why should he see your faces worse like me than the children who are of your sort? Then shall you make me endanger my head with the king. Right. See, the other people of his sort was not uh, 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 in this position here. So they ate what was in the land, right? But they had these brothers here. These brothers here were the ones that had a lot of understanding, right? So they kept them in captivity, right? Kept them in prison. Go ahead and read, bro. Verse 11. Then said Daniel to Melzah, whom the prince of the eunuchs have set had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, prove your service, I beseech you ten days, and let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Mm -hmm. Then let our countenances be looked upon before you, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat, and as you see, deal with your servants. Mm -hmm. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them ten days. And at the end of ten days, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children who did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Melzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them vegetables. As for these four children, Elohim gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now, at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. And in all matter of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. 
And Daniel continued even until the first year of King Cyrus. Mm -hmm. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, and his spirit was troubled, and his sleep went from him. Then the king commanded to summon the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers, sorcerers and the Chaldeans to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spoke the Chaldeans to the king in Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell your servant the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. If you will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation of it, you shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dung heap. Mm -hmm. But if you show the dream and its interpretation, you shall receive from me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation of it. Right. See how hard this those ass was? Say, now, wait a minute now. You astrologers. Y'all soothsayers. Y'all sorcerers, right? Y'all mighty men. If you don't show me this dream, I'm going to kill y'all. Tear down your house and kill you. Go ahead and read. Them ass didn't take no mess, Jack. <laughs> they still don't. Yeah, no, man, you get them airs, man. They get them airs psyched up. Get to tell them, man, if you go take this truck and drive this truck over there in that service station there, brother, and push this button as soon as you get in that service station, brother, and you will go instantly to heaven and have sex 77 times a day. Right. And get them dudes all psyched up, Jack, and they go and blow up the whole world. Mm -hmm. That's actually a, uh, a philosophy among the Arab uh, religious sect. They got it from the Japanese, Kamikaze. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, kamikaze and horses, bro. Well, but long before these, uh, uh, these, these later days. The 77 times issue. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> Go ahead, read, brother. Verse 7. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servant in the dream, and we will show the interpretation of it. The king answered and said, I know of certainty that you would gain the time. No, you gonna wait till this thing get away. See, that's what y'all trying to do. Y'all trying to jive, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead, bro. Because you see the thing is gone from me. Mm -hmm. But if you will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. But you have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time is changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I shall know that you can show me its interpretation. Mm -hmm. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There's not a man upon the earth that can reveal the king's matter. Therefore, there's no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such thing of any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. And it is a rare thing that the king requires, and there's no other that can reveal it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. For this cause, the king was very was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. Mm -hmm. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain, and they saw Daniel and his fellows to be slain. The decree went forth, and then they killed the men that was in that city. <laughs> they went and saw Daniel, saw them brothers, <laughs> kill them and did it. They have anything to do with it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Go ahead, <laughs> Verse 14. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Ariok, the captain of the king's guard, who was going forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to Ariok, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Mm -hmm. Then Ariok made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Mm -hmm. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azario, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the Elohim of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. He did just what he was supposed to do, didn't he? Exactly. He went and revealed it to the brothers and man, y'all pray to the Lord. That he revealed this thing to us, because if y'all we don't believe reveal this thing to us, we're going to be slain too, and we haven't done anything. Right. We didn't have nothing to do with that. We don't stand in the king's court yet. Hmm. Go ahead and read, bro. Verse 19. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in the night vision. Then Daniel blessed the Elohim of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of Yahweh forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. But he changed the times and the seasons. 
He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to those who know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. I thank you and praise you, O you Elohim of my fathers, who have given me who have given me wisdom and might, and have made known unto me now what we desire of you. For you have now made known unto us the king's matter. Amen. Therefore Daniel went in unto Ariok, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will reveal unto the king the interpretation. Mm -hmm. Then Ariok brought in Daniel before the king in haste, and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Yehuda that will make known unto the king the interpretation. He didn't find nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. Daniel, what you hear? Right. You see, he wants to reward the thing. Ah, uh, King, I found a man that's going to take care of this for you. Don't forget me. <laughs> Go on and read, man. Yes, sir. Verse 26. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Are you able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation of it? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise man, the astrologers, the magician, the soothsayers says, Reveal unto the king. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets and make known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Amen. Your dreams and the visions of your head upon your bed are these. As for you, O king, your thoughts came into your mind upon your bed, what should come to pass hereafter. And he who revealeth secrets make known to you what should come to pass. Mm -hmm. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than in the living. Mm -hmm. But for their sake that shall make known the interpretation to the king, and that you might know the thoughts of your heart. Mm -hmm. You, O king, saw and behold a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before you, and the form of it was terrible. This image head was of fine gold, its breast and its arm of silver, its belly and its thighs of brass, its legs of iron, its feet part of iron and part of clay. Now if you notice this this, this statue, y'all have had this. Mm -hmm. Y'all have seen all these pictures and everything. The statue got cheaper and cheaper mm -hmm. and cheaper mm -hmm. with, 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 with each empire, right? right. Okay. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 34. You saw until a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and broke them to pieces. Now he said, Now see, when you go to war and you got you a stone, Jack, you don't be trying to smite nobody on their toes, do you? Right. You wanna bust your brother in his head, don't you? Right. See? When you when you go in the back there, somebody bothering with you, walk by there and you pick up your alley apple jack and throw that back by you throwing in somebody's head, right? right. But this, this, this image here, the stone was cut out of the mountain without hand and smoked that image on his feet with them ten toes. Right. right. Okay. Go ahead, bro. Yes, sir. Verse 35. Then were the iron and clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became like the champ of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain mm -hmm. and filled the whole earth. Hold on. Give me a second. Okay, read that uh, last verse for me. Verse 35. Then were the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind that carried them away, and the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. You're talking about the Messiah, right? Right. The stone that smote him became a great mountain and filled the whole earth, right? Right. Okay. Who is it going to smite this, this beast? You. Right. You. Isaiah said, call the elders, gather the women and the children, let the priests, the ministers of God, weep between the porch and the altar and say what? Save your people, O God. So for why should the uh, 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 heathen bear rule over them? And you always said, fear not. I'm going to give you corn. I'm going to give you wine. Don't you even worry about that. Mm -hmm. right. So Judah is going to be in Jerusalem at this time, right? Amen. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, the stone is the Messiah, but see, the Messiah is going to come in. Judah is going to attack the city of Zion. 
the Messiah is going to come in and destroy this whole image. He's going to smite the beast on his feet. Because that's what I'm talking about, the Messiah right here. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 36. This is the dream, and we will tell its interpretation before the king. Mm -hmm. You, O king, are a king of kings. For the Elohim of heaven have given you a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wherever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven have he given into your hand and have made you ruler over them all. You are this head. The Babylonian Empire, 6060 of BC, the Mares, the Shemites, they was this head of gold, right? Mm -hmm. Brothers don't know this. So brothers walk around and say, Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> uh -huh. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. You're going to read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse. 39. And after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to you, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. So the Medes and the Persians came in in the second empire, right? Mm -hmm. And then the Greeks came in in the third empire, but that was the great, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. First, well, that's another thing they don't understand why the Gentiles or the Europeans are bearing rule over all the earth, right? They've been appointed to it, right? They had a time. Of course. That's what the Muslims. The rulers of the earth had a time span to rule the earth. And they don't understand that, bro. See, when they tried in 625 B.C., uh, uh, it didn't work, right? right? When they tried again in the 13th century, it didn't work. They fought that war all over to... Each time, the Europeans turned that war at Constantinople, Istanbul, right? Mm -hmm. And then, man, them Christians got together and went on crusade. Them Christians didn't wait for them to attack no more. Them Christians went on the attack, Josh. Yes, and they've been attacking ever since. Yes, They're over there in, 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 in Iraq, attacking right now. Right. Okay. Right. Wait till they come up like a lion from the swelling of the joy trying to attack them all, trying to attack Jerusalem and see what happens. Mm -hmm. This bad boy, he's going to slide off into the Atlantic mm -hmm. and the Pacific and the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read it, brother. <coughs> First. 40. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron break in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. Mm -hmm. And whereas you saw the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. But thou shalt be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as you saw the iron mixed with my right. clay. The kingdom been divided ever since Rome fell in 476 AD, right? It's been ten, nine kings so far that has come up to try to revive that and hold the Roman Empire, right? The beast is in the process of being healed right now. And it's going to be healed in, in our lifetime. Mm. Amen. And y'all ain't going to be no old folks when they get healed either. The ones they already old. <laughs> Where these, brother? <laughs> yes, sir. Verse 42. And as the toes of the feet were parted by and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Mm -hmm. And whereas you saw iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another. Right. Even if iron is not mixed with clay. Right. They're going to have wars and wars and more wars, right? Go ahead and leave, brother. So we're talking about other ethnic groups against one another? Mm-hmm. Okay. Verse 44. And in the days of these kings... In the days of these ten kings. The ten kings that come out of them, them ten toes, right? right. In the days of, of these ten kings... Go ahead and read. Shall the Elohim of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Amen. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. This is going to be set up on the earth, right? Mm -hmm. But the Christians said, no, we're going to tell <coughs> Verse 45. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great Elohim have made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation of it sure. Mm -hmm. Then the king, Nebuchadnezzar, fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odor unto him. <laughs> the king <laughs> said, bro. Not even worship this dude. He acknowledged the whole time at all. Right, not even going to worship this dude. He didn't think about God. He didn't think about this dude here. Go ahead and read, brother. As you can see. Verse 47. 
The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your Elohim is a God of God and the Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets. Mm -hmm. Seeing you could reveal this secret. Mm -hmm. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many gifts and made him ruler over the whole prince of Babylon, province of Babylon, and the chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Okay, my brother, uh, uh, go ahead. Please. Then Daniel requested of the king, and he set Shadrach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Okay, okay, my brother, let's go into chapter you. four. Pick that up for sure. Well, I'm gonna ask you something too. You know, I was thinking about Joseph in Egypt. And this brother here, wherever our people have been, we always been in that political realm, right? Sure. Ruling right in that political area where we were captains. Like today, we got a lot of brothers in, you know, politics. Mm -hmm. sure. That's all right. always be up there with the rough shoulders of folks that money. All right. Jason always rough shoulders of power, brother. That's where you get your, that's where they get their bread from. Mm -hmm. Them silk suits and foot joy shoes and all that stuff. Drive them them uh, uh, severe STSs and L dogs and so forth, right? Fly around in planes and get blown up in the sky, right? Like Brown. Who in the lead, though? Daniel chapter 4, verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, unto all the people, unto all people, nation and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high Elohim had wrought toward me. How great are his signs, and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers, and I told the dream to them, but they did not make known unto me its interpretation. But at the last, Daniel came in before me, whose name is Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And to him I told the dream, saying, O Belteshazzar, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in you, and no secret troubleth you, tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen, and the interpretation of it. Right, he's going to tell Daniel, yeah, you got God's plural in you. Uh, you got a whole, you got the spirit of the, all the holy gods in you. Right. See, this, this this dude here, Nebuchadnezzar, he don't understand what the it is yet. Go ahead and read, bro. Yes, sir. Verse 10. Thus were the visions of my head in my bed. I saw, and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height of it was great. The tree grew and was strong, and its height reached unto heaven and the sight of it to the end of all the earth. Mm -hmm. Its leaves were fair, and its fruit much, and in it was meat for all. The beasts of the field had shadow under it, and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in its bowls, and all flesh was fed from it. I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down a tree and cut off its branches, shake off its leaves, and scatter its fruit. Let the beast get away from under it and the fowls from its branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of its roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass, in the tender grass of the field. Mm -hmm. And let him be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beast in the grass of the earth. Mm -hmm. Let his heart be changed from man, and let a beast's heart be given unto him. And let seven times pass over him. And let seven times pass over him, right? Let seven times to pass over here. Now, this happened to Nebuchadnezzar, but this is also going off into another thing. It's going off into the times given the Europeans to rule. This is why he told them, say, this dream is to your enemies. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Verse 17. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the words of the Holy One to the intent that the living may know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and give it to whomsoever he will and set up over it the bases of men. The bases of men, right? Check out your president. Yeah, well, I'm like it too. 
Yeah. All of them, check yeah. them all out. Yeah. They had folks who walked around with powder, wigs, white wigs on the head full of powder, they like a bunch of sissies. Right. <laughs> Wearing them knickers and everything. What they got, Benjamin Franklin out there, man, with his, with his wearing them tights and, and snuffing all that cocaine and so forth, and wearing them tights and everything, right all jacked up on his butt, talking about, strike the lightning, lightning, strike it. Yeah, okay, go ahead and read, brother. <laughs> This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now you, O Belshazzar, declare the interpretation of it. For as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation, but you are able, for the spirit of the holy God is in you. Then Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, was a stone for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spoke and said, Belshazzar, let not the dream or its interpretation trouble you. Belshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate you. The dream is to them that hate you. See? The dream is to them that hate you, right? Who was it that came in and took over from there? The Europeans, wasn't it? and the interpretation of it to your enemies. The tree that you saw, which grew ever strong, whose height reached unto the heavens, and the sight of it to all the earth, whose leaves were fair, and its fruit much, and in it was meat for all, of the which the beasts of the field dwelt, and of the fun, whose branches the fowls of the heavens had their habitation. It is you, O king, that are grown and become strong. For your greatness is grown and reaches unto heaven, and your dominion to the end of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher and an holy one coming down from heaven and said, Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of its roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let him be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field to seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which is come upon my Lord the king that they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make you to eat grass like oxen, and they shall wet you with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over you, till you know that the Most High ruleth and the kingdom of men, and give it to whomsoever he will. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree, leave the stump of the tree roots, your kingdom shall be sure unto you, after you shall have known that the heavens do rule. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto you, and break off your sins by righteousness, and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if there may be a lengthening of your tranquility. Mm -hmm. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of twelve months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spoke and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? Said that. Mm -hmm. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from you, and they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you to eat grass like oxen, and seven times shall pass over you, till you know that Yahweh rules in the kingdom of men, and give it to whomsoever he will. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was dri driven from men, and did eat grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hair was grown like eagle's feathers, and his nails like birds' claws. At the, and at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me, and I bless Yahweh, and I praise and honor him who liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doeth thou? At the same time my reason returned unto me. 
And for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and my brightness returned unto me. And my counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, who all whose works are true and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride he is able to obey. Amen. Yes, sir. Verse chapter 5. Mm -hmm. When he said the dream be to them that hate you, what did he say? If only the dream was about your enemy and not you. Well, the way I the way I understand that is that when he said the dream be to them that hate you, his uh, uh, he didn't hate himself and his his counselors and so forth didn't hate him, so it had to be the people that was uh, going to come upon him and take the land from him. Uh, they was going to hate him because they, the people that was going to take the land from him was going to lose the land for 2,500 to him. I, I understand that. I just meant that specific dream about the tree. Because... Well, the tree was about specifically about him. That was right. specifically about him because all that came up on uh, Nebuchadnezzar. But when it went off into the seven times that was going to come up on him, that had to deal with, uh, that part of it had to deal with to them to hate him. And those, the right, right. See, uh, that, <coughs> that, that first part of it had to do only with Nebuchadnezzar because that only happened to him. So you see how the Lord hypes those kings up? You know, they get to get to stomping around in their vanity and while they in the height of their vanity, the Lord just cut them right on, break them down to the lowest common denominator. Brother, wait till you see when y'all really begin the angel of the Lord beginning to hack some of us up. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to see this. Story. You won't see. I might be the first one. If you don't, if you don't die, if you don't die between the time that we get out there in that wilderness, you're going to see it. Amen. But 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 look at this also. Once we get out there in that wilderness, brother, it's going to have to raise up. Uh, uh, it's going to be a very charismatic uh, ruler that's going to have to come to, uh, 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 among us in order for us to follow him into Jerusalem. Because you know, all of us, man, it's going to be about 20 million of us out there. You know we ain't gonna follow nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all be gonna have to set something up, brother, the way we gonna have to have a very charismatic brother doing it. Cause all these brothers, every man, when the people keep talking about man, all I wanna see is Israel to come together. Israel ain't gonna come together till the Messiah show up. Divine intervention. Right. Just before the Messiah come up, Israel, uh, Judah's gonna come together. But as far as Israel is concerned, Israel ain't gonna come together with nobody because all Israel think they're gods anyway. Every man like it like you like. Hmm. People walk around to me, I ain't gonna be under no man. Everybody's under some man. Exactly. Humility is the key. I know. Go ahead and read. Daniel chapter 5, verse 1. Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Mm -hmm. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the gold and the silver vessels which his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princess, his wife and his concubines might drink from them. Mm -hmm. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of Elohim, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princess and his wives and his concubines drank from them. Mm -hmm. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. Mm -hmm. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and broke over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw part of the hand that wrote. Can you imagine that? Uh -huh. Looking up and seeing part of the hand and some thing and the finger right on the wall. <laughs> on the glass of the wall. Can you imagine that boy? Yeah. Yeah, that'll, make, that'll make you jump out your skin. Exactly. Well, I remember the first time I saw something, man, I almost jumped up out of the building, man. Mm. Yes, sir, man. It scared me to death. Sitting there reading and looked up at the dude was sitting across from me, man. It scared me to death. Mm. Mm. You saw your reflection? With no mirror there. <laughs> I was sitting at the kitchen table with no mirror there, bro. Go ahead and read that. I had another brother came up to the house, man. The brother saw something in the house. He got out of there and he never did come back no more. He told me, man, ain't going to your house no more. He just stopped walking around in your house. Right? right? That's to protect me from the niggas. Verse 6. Then Belshazzar said, Behold, the king's counselors were changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loosed. 
and his knees smote one against another. Right. <laughs> the king cried aloud to bring in his astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. Bring them in! Bring them on in here! Wait! <laughs> yeah, brother. Go ahead and read. Oh, Esther Rose and all them old spirits. Yeah, 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 I know. I know. She did, right. that, brother. Right. She couldn't get that Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and She having a good time, man. Nah. The king brought a law to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spoke and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me its interpretation shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Mm. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing nor make known to the king the interpretation of it. Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were a stone. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house, and the queen spoke and said, O king, live forever. Let not your thoughts trouble you, nor let your countenance be changed. There is a man in your kingdom, in whom is the spirit of the holy God, and in the days of your fathers, your father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him, whom the king, Nebuchadnezzar, your father, the king, I say, your father made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of, dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spoke and said unto Daniel, Are you that Daniel who are of the children of the captivity of Yehudah, whom the king, my father, brought out, brought out of Jewry? I have even heard of you, that the spirit of the gods is in you, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. And now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me, that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation of it, but they could not show the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of you that you can make interpretation and dissolve doubts. Now, if you can read the writing and make known to me the interpretation of it, you shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about your neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered and said unto the king, Let your gifts be to yourself and give your reward to another. Let your gifts be yourself. Amen. Amen. See? We wait, see, and when Christ mass time come, them folks be passed out, them bonuses be the right there, though. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Custom. <laughs> Boy, that's so in the shop, eh? Yeah, I know. Don't kill that good. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what, brother? I never thought of it on that turn. Now, here we are. We practice Judaism, right? And we got laws, but now if the Gentiles give us money, they're actually giving us that money for the purpose of serving their gods, right? Oh, you know, I'm buying either way then, right? Take it down. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I didn't have to talk about that. It's valuable to the church. Right. Right. Keep living. Never thought about it. Never thought about it, bro. Keep living. Nothing. Thing you never said. Like I tell brothers when they come to brothers, about it. you know, my understanding is I said, just keep sitting right there in that chair. But my type company don't give up on it. Sure you don't. You don't read, bro. Yeah. Brother, okay, uh, 18, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. O thy king, the most high Elohim gave Nebuchadnezzar your father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nation, and languages tremble and fear before him. Whom he would, he slew, and whom he would, he kept alive. And whom he would, he sat down, and whom he would, he put up. But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was disposed from his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beast, and his dwelling with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that Yahweh ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will. Amen. And you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, 
though you knew all this, mm -hmm. but have lifted up yourself against the Adonai of heaven, and they have brought the vessels of his house before you, you and your lords, your wives and your concubines, have drunk wine from them, and you have praised the gods of silver and gold, of bread, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know, and the Elohim in in whose hand are your in whose hand your breath is, and of whose all your ways have been <coughs> glorified. Amen. Then was part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Many, many, tekel, you far sin. This is the interpretation of the thing. Many, Elohim have numbered your kingdom and finished it. Tekel, you are weighed in the balances and are found wanting. You weighed in the balance and you found wanting. <laughs> See, not only is your kingdom taken, you've been weighed in the balance and you ain't did right here. You ain't did right yourself, right? Go ahead, bro. Verse 28. Perez, your kingdom is divided and given to the Russians and Persians. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet, and put a chain of gold about his neck, and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. Hmm. And that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain, and Darius, the Russian, took the kingdom, being about 62 years old. Okay, uh, I'm going uh, to stop right there. And uh, next week what we'll do is we'll come in and we'll pick up... Uh, We'll pick this up at uh, at chapter seven and verse one. We'll go ahead. And I'm quite sure that some of y'all have already been prepped uh, for this piece. So when I go into this piece, y'all don't think I'm talking about a bunch of junk. You should have had these things already. So uh, next week we'll pick that up at Daniel seven and uh, verse one. And may y'all go ahead and lead until we bless the end of this word. Do we have any announcements?